You guys aren't going to believe it. My audio is messed up again. Ralph messing up his audio? No way. So because of some really specific technical problem that's very hard to explain, my recording is all glitchy. We sent the audio file over to Elon Musk, and he did his best to fix it. But there's only so much he can do. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, bye. Three, two, one. So the reason why that was played off my phone and not an impression okay. is because coming up to it, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't fucking stomach it. There are some things that just make you feel you, way too I cringy. I see you try doing it. No. No, you should have done it. Can you not do the I'm back at least? can start again. I'm mm. back. It's, it makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> We're no, starting to cast everybody. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me introduce no, no, no. ourselves. The, episode, for, the, the, the whole no, we're not restarting the episode because if I start the episode like that, then people restart. will just leave. People who have never heard our podcast before will be like, ah, just irritated. Turn it off, like if they haven't already. But let let's introduce right. ourselves first, and then I'll give it a shot. But I won't okay. feel proud of myself. Uh, this is Sardana Cast. I'm Adam from Your Movie Sucks. I'm Ralph from YouTube.com slash Ralph the Movie Maker. And I'm Alex from IHE. I'm Beak. Uh. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Joe for Joey's Super Cool Food Reviews. I'm Beak. It's so early. It's so early for me right now. I can't. <laughs> Ralph, what about, what about your I'm back? Let's hear your I'm back. My voice no. just broke. Now come on, no, I'm, I'm Beak. Really when did I agree to do this? Fuck that. I can't nah, come do on. it. I don't even know what... I don't, I don't remember it. So. I'm... Just... Come on. <laughs> it's not no. hard. All right. No, it's just okay. Well, immoral. everyone's gonna be really pissed at you, and that's your fault. So whatever. Yeah, that's all right. I get to. <laughs> <laughs> He's used to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, just past eleven a.m., and I feel very tired. We were oh, it's so eleven a.m. and you're tired. Yeah, what time I did know. you go to bed? Well, you know. Um, probably <laughs> like actually midnight, but it it's not it's never like consistent sleep. I don't know, it's it's like broken up. I had so many fucked up weird nightmares, and I think it's also because the heat in my house isn't working properly. So I'm wearing a jacket right now, but I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> we're all yeah, we're all okay, feeling fair enough, fair enough, fine and dandy here on the most happiest. Worried exciting podcast that has ever been created of all time well, i haven't been feeling great recently want to know why yes why i, I caught a disease <laughs> for, for real disease. what you ever heard of born born home <laughs> disease you ever heard of this i have no. no idea what you're talking about your boy got born home disease <laughs> what the it's just a virus that makes it so it's really hard to breathe no i'm serious <laughs> I'm not joking. Can you spell it out? I, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> B-O-R-N, like like baby being born. Born. Then H-O-L-M. Born, born home. home. Really difficult to say. Okay. Yeah, Google it. It's real. I'm very sorry. It's real. Yeah, it was horrible. You have it? Genuinely thought I was going to die. Jesus. Oh, it's shit. gone now. Because it's, yeah. That sucks. Yeah, it's gone now, but it was nasty. Did it it was nasty, but nasty. No, it was only it was four days or so. Yeah, it can oh, last okay. like a few weeks, but luckily... I got a good immune system, so it got poo-pooed away. But so you just like couldn't breathe for a few days, or what? Well, it's like you could. I could only breathe extremely shallow breaths. Ugh. Which, um, if you wake up and then suddenly it hurts to take anything deeper than you know the most shallow breath possible, it's a bit of a panic moment. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, nasty. I've never heard of that before. That's horrific. I'd never heard of it, but my dad happens to be a microbiologist and was <laughs> like, oh, those are the symptoms of this really obscure disease. Wow. And I was like, oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> How do you think you got it? Rolling uh, around the in same the way you get dirt. any virus or infection. <laughs> yeah. It's probably, you know, buying a carrot at the supermarket. Oh, yeah. Mm. Fucking so carrots. carrots. That's crazy. No. Nope. That's Those fucking carrots always do it. <laughs> Uh, okay, move on. Yeah. 
No, that was interesting. Thanks. It was. It, well, yeah. I mean, it's good to know you're not dead yet. Yeah, I'm happy you're not dead, Alex. Yeah, uh, it'll get me one day. Yeah, get born it'll get all of us day. one day. You'll all get born home before you know it. <laughs> um, we all. Uh, so basically, we all watched the Spider-Man movies, and usually for the podcast. We wait until, you know, further into the episode to talk about them. But there's three different movies. And also, we kind of want to talk about the amazing Mm Spider-Man movies. So we figured we'd just jump right into it. Uh, Apparently, Ralph rewatched the amazing Spider-Man films. I rewatched the second one because it's hilarious. I don't think Alex rewatched either of those, but he definitely watched the... No, I'm very familiar with them, though. Yeah, he watched the Raimi trilogy. We've all seen them a few times. Yeah, so why don't we uh, why don't we start? I guess Alex and I will just talk from memory about the the amazing Spider Man <laughs> film. But Ralph, you why don't you why don't you introduce it? I guess we're gonna say spoiler warning for all of these, by the way. Yeah, for all. Oh, what do you want me to say? That they're terrible. I I just watched them to confirm that the Sam Raimi ones were better, and yeah, they're a hundred percent way. Way better than Mark Webb's. <laughs> Do you think Sony hired Mark <laughs> Webb because of his name? Hundred <laughs> percent. Why else? That's the only reason. This... He's a terrible director. He's never made a good movie. That Five Hundred Days of Summer movie is like the corniest fucking bullshit I've ever seen. And yeah. I hate the Amazing Spider-Man movies. <laughs> I hate them. They're so bad and corny and poorly made. And they lack none of the style or the charm of those original movies at all. The writing is awful. The villain was terrible. Just everything about him. But it's a yeah. lizard man. Such a shame. Yeah. The lizard, the lizard could be kind of cool, I guess. Actually, that's the thing about Spider-Man. He has some goofy-ass villains. So if you don't have a goofy tone or like some kind of visual flair going on, it is really hard to pull, pull off these characters. Yeah. Especially that someone like the lizard. Mistake. It was like, way too to serious. With it. And Peter Parker was so not Peter Parker. He acted like some like uh, he was too hot. Oh, yeah. I have cool hair. And he I wasn't a nerdy skateboard. anymore. Not... No, he wasn't nerdy at all. Tobey Maguire is a fucking dork in those uh, Spider-Man <laughs> movies. And Tom Holland saw so well. And we're well, yeah. Miles, Tom Holland's the fun. one that looks most like. A young person, <laughs> most like a kid. Yeah, he looks like so he's it kind of works. Years old. Yeah, yeah. He's like a combination. He takes the best parts of both. He's like yeah. a realistically mm-hmm. kind of dorky, but a bit hot kind of guy, you know. Yeah. Whereas the uh-huh. other two are a bit too far in each direction. Yeah. Tobey Maguire's ugly. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah we'll get into that when we talk we'll, about this. We'll get into but... that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop saying that. That's very mean. <laughs> oh, we'll stop at the end of the podcast. Okay. I don't remember too much about the first Amazing Spider-Man because it was like so boring. I consider the second one to be just absolutely hilarious. Mm-hmm. All I remember about the first one is the uh, <laughs> the the uh, n- the the tape or whatever on it on his camera that said property of peter parker and that was the plot device because yeah. the lizard found oh, the camera awesome. and it was like oh it has oh. peter parker's name on it <laughs> now i know God, who this camera this is this <laughs> like, kid is supposed to be like a scientific genius yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. literally left his name on it and uh yeah. yeah i mean i like the lizard dude but that's about it you like him not not his character the aesthetics. I can't. His motive. He has the worst motivation. It's like, I want to turn everyone in the city into lizards. I know. Why? Because <laughs> my arm didn't grow. <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> That's so dumb. Yeah. Uh, you know the one scene I remember though. One thing I remember about that first Amazing Spider-Man movie is, oh god, it, it really encapsulates what they got wrong with it. Is that bizarre scene where, epic, cool, sp- hot Spider-Man. Is kind of figuring out his powers while Coldplay is playing in the background and he's skateboarding around like a warehouse. That scene sucks. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of like cross promotion brand opportunities and shit. (laughs) The uh, Amazing Spider-Man films. It's like Sony just just they 
couldn't even dial it back a notch. And in Amazing Spider-Man 2, it gets so, so much worse. But yeah, I, the, the reason why I didn't watch the first one again is because it's just like waste of time, boring. Yeah, what's the point? Like, there's, it's not a fun experience. Like, I, I would put no. everybody in the room to sleep if I put it on. Yeah. That, well, that we film's just so lame. Movie to keep the rights to Spider-Man, as far as I know. Because mm-hmm. you have to do something with property every once in a while. Otherwise, you lose the rights. I think it was something yeah. like that. Yeah, so I think it was something like that. that movie, and it, it yeah. totally feels like a movie that was made for that reason. Because of just how bland it is. It wasn't like Spider-Man 3 didn't make money, though, was it? So that yeah. was literally it. I mean... I guess, but just those originals are so stylish and, and fun. And the music is great. And, and then the music in the Amazing Spider-Man movies is the blandest fucking temp music you can imagine. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the first movie, it was pretty bland. Yeah, the first movie is pretty bland. The second movie is downright awful with the Pharrell Williams yeah. uh, rapping. And like it's crazy. <laughs> Let's section this off. Let's uh, stop talking about... The first Amazing Spider-Man. What are what are your ratings for that film from memory? And then we'll go into Amazing Spider-Man Two. Oh Jesus! What do you think of it? God, um... I want to give it more than than Amazing Spider-Man Two, so I'll give it a two out of five. Yeah, I would say at this point it's like it's not awful. It's probably I don't know from memory. It's probably like a five for me. Yeah, out of yeah 10. I was just really? looking on my That's on my too rating. High. I, I have it as a one star. Well, I'm trying to strike some balance between, like, you know, my personal feelings of what Spider-Man should be versus, like, what they wanted it to be. And they obviously wanted it to be something that I consider to be just, like, awful and un- uninteresting. But, you mm. know, in, in terms of, like, filmmaking, it wasn't, like, the most incompetent thing ever. It was just, like, bland, right? And... In my opinion, yes. personally, when I rate something a 5 out of 10, depending on the kind of movie it is, it, that could be considered my worst rating. Because when I want to see a film, I want to see something either amazingly terrible or amazing, not middle-of-the-road mm-hmm. boring, right? Which is what I consider that film to yeah. be. It's just it's It's so uninteresting. It's not terrible enough to be funny, and it's not good enough to be entertaining so that's oh, but there's plenty of terrible moments in it like like, like the crane scene remember that no like, i don't just all these uh, see that's the problem is i don't Spider-Man. remember it that's the fucking problem <laughs> well i definitely yeah. saw the film <laughs> but i don't remember <laughs> it <laughs> that's why i gave it a one like i i remember nothing about it it's completely unexceptional in every way yeah. and it is the worst a movie can be just a a total cash grab waste. pointless waste yeah yeah all right um amazing spider-man 2 <laughs> well, <that's that. laughs> uh a that masterpiece be even worse. i <laughs> i do want to talk Break about the fucking you. soundtrack <laughs> that you mentioned because this is this is hans zimmer and pharrell williams <laughs> and this i love a matchup. what a team up oh my god the interview footage for it is so good because like Hans Zimmer's just being a nice guy, you know. He's just he he was clearly just told by from by Sony to work with Pharrell Williams for no reason. And what's hilarious about it is I pointed <laughs> this out in my review, my review which blew up at the time because there were so many people that were like uh, butting heads over this movie. Because right now, like at this point in time, everybody considers it to be terrible. When that film came out. Everybody was arguing about it. There were people that fucking yeah, loved it, and everybody was super loud. And my review, just because like everybody was sharing it, either because they agreed or disagreed with it, that one just blew up. And um, one of the points mm-hmm. I made in that review was that it felt like Sony's inclusion of Electro as a villain was trying to essentially have the film be this kind of dubstep tone which is why they got Pharrell Williams, obviously. Even though he doesn't do dubstep, like I just don't think they understand yeah. that. I think they just assume, like, oh, hey, a not-white person doing pop music, they can do dubstep. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I, I don't know. But so, so Sony's emails got leaked, and it confirmed everything that I was saying. 
<laughs> I want to find the exact quote here. Just give me one second. Well, that's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. There it is. EDM, in brackets, electronic dance music, is the defining music for millennials. Wondering if there's an EDM <laughs> angle somewhere with Spidey. <laughs> his his movements are beautiful. Oh, this is cool. Would be awesome with a killer DJ behind it. Literally in the oh, Sony yeah. email leaks. And I was so happy because I was like, okay, this is this is pretty much exactly what I was talking about. Good lord. It, it's, a, it's a stylistic <laughs> decision that totally worked in favor of the film. It really added a new angle to uh, Spider-Man as a character. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. When Damn Electro straight. attacks people, it's you can hear the dubstep. Right. That was so cool. EDM. Have, have you ever seen that in a film before? No. <laughs> and the lyrics as well. God, they were they were poignant. Oh, That's yeah. That's the word for it. Paranoia, They're whispering. Paranoia. That's a perfect word for it. During the film. Sammy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can hear him whispering something. Like, they lied to us. It very experimental. I, I just... For a I, mainstream summer blockbuster. I don't think Pharrell Williams understands what a movie score is <laughs> like you don't write lyrics <laughs> for one <laughs> why'd you do that well you can sometimes it's just yeah it's kind of fit i mean well if you're gonna write lyrics for something it could be like music inspired by the motion picture put it in the credits or something maybe even do the exact same song but when you're playing the scene from the film just take out the lyrics take out the lyric why do you have lyrics in your hans zimmer score I don't know. It's, that's not the issue. That the, Suspiria has lyrics in the soundtrack. That's not the issue. The issue is the lyrics are terrible. They're, they're yeah. terrible and they make they're no so, sense. And they're, so they're in parts of the film where they should be. Like action sequences or like build up, build up to action. Like it was crazy. The Tom York soundtrack in Suspiria, that's not like, I mean, it's a, he, he essentially just wrote songs that could be used during sequences in the film, right? It, it's as though these yeah. songs existed previously and they plucked it out of an artist's library, in a sense. But these songs for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, they they added in rhythmical whispering where, <coughs> where they're supposed to be played over, like, action sequences where the other characters are uh -huh. talking, and it's just so distracting. Like, in Suspiria, that was, there was like long sequences where no one was talking and it was just kind of like this montage from what I remember, right? Whereas Amazing well, Spider-Man yeah. too. Yeah. Sometimes there's that Yeah, well. I'm just saying, I want to compare the quality level of Suspiria to Amazing Spider-Man 2 because I think they're about the same. Yeah. I think okay. singing That's is funny. a lot yeah. less distracting than uh, whispering. And also, uh, I mean like the 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 Suspiria soundtrack, that's a song where you can Im imagine vocals going with it, right? Like a Tom York song. The tone of it complements it. Whereas you're creating something like a, an actual score, you know, like movie music. I don't think mm -hmm. words should go with that <laughs> if it's going to be that tone. I mean, like, feel free to be experimental, but it just plain didn't fucking work. No, it didn't work at all. It was a laughable failure. Yeah, very on the nose. Well, everything else in the movie. Uh, so. Well, yeah, I mean, every single element is is as laughable as that. Literally every single element. I I, I can't rewatch that film, unlike you guys. I, I get no enjoyment out of it. I just get so angry. It pisses me <laughs> off so much because it's just so... It's, it's such so an amazing. insult. It's such yeah. an insult. And the fact that, like, Spider-Man fans, you know, some Spider-Man fans out there do still defend it. I mean... It is, it is still a thing like that you see people yeah I really like certain scenes from it and it's it's so blatant to me how they just plucked super famous stories from Spider-Man comic runs and just oh let's just I don't know let's have the Green Goblin just fly into a uh -huh. a clock tower that's in the middle of a yeah. power station and then so we can reenact <laughs> a scene from the comic like that they kind of thing is so they yeah they just show original. it they, keep, they steal things from the old Spider-Man movies there's that joke with his laundry where he puts the laundry in and he takes it out and it's like all red and blue and it was funny. And then mm -hmm. Amazing Spider-Man 2 made it into this 10 minute long improv scene of Aunt May and Peter for fucking arguing about, oh, the, the laundry, why is it blue and red? It's terrible. 
it goes on for so long, and there's so many scenes like that where they just they, it's just dialogue scenes that lead to nothing. Aunt May has nothing to do in the fucking movie either. She's in that fucking hospital. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ranting. It's know, such a funny. bad movie. <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, but um, when I watched the Spider-Man movies for this podcast episode, I actually just invited a bunch of people over <laughs> and we had a marathon mm. and uh, it was a lot of yeah, fun. That's what I did. And um, I put The Amazing Spider-Man 2 on last just for people that were still there and drunk. And um, <laughs> since it was since this was the first time I was watching it like at home and I could like rewind or whatever you know, 4K Blu-ray, good screen. Every time a Sony product placement happened, we just all yelled out, Sony! And it happened so <laughs> many fucking times. I swear there were like at yeah. least 30. I'm not even fucking kidding. I'm not even yeah, it's fucking pretty kidding. Egregious. It's actually insane. Like every single TV, every single phone, every yeah. single laptop. I, I, I can't even remember the most obscure ones, but they were fucking everywhere. It was insane. You gotta dial it back just yeah. a bit, you know? When Sony puts that many ads in a film, it makes me think that the film isn't being made to be a film. It makes me think that this is actually mm -hmm. just a strategy to get people to buy tickets to watch an ad. Which That's would what be bugs really me about smart. it so much. It's so blatant. It's yeah. so blatant about it. It's everywhere. Not beating around the bush at all. When Electro decides to go to Times Square, for no reason. That's more ad space. No, because there was electricity there. Yeah. The most electricity. <laughs> that was Mark the most Webb. electricity in the city. But not the power plant at the end. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't worry about that. That's where the most electricity Once is. And you can Square. just, like, reach into the sidewalk at Times Square and pull out these massive cables. <laughs> yeah, that's very easy. I go to Times Square all the time. It's just massive cables still lying around. <laughs> like, it's a third world country. Yeah. yeah. What about the bizarre angle they took with making Peter Parker's parents this weird mystery? Remember yeah. that? With the, like, plane scene at the beginning? It's <laughs> with like the coins and the subway. Minute, yeah. yeah, that yeah. subway thing was stupid. It just made no sense. Oh my god. It was really, really dull. The movie was already really long. Like, it would, at least if they took all that out, it would barely change the plot that's already in there anyway. And yeah, it would be absolutely. shorter. Yeah, and that, that it's stuff totally is totally very really inconsistent with like the second part of the movie, where like that first scene is the born kind of like plain scene. Yeah, that was and weird. And then the second scene is like Spider Man being goofy and fucking quips and the rhino yeah, it and it's all silly. Paul Giamatti, <laughs> plutonium. Yeah, who's like barely in it. Yeah. It's the whole Mary Jane subplot that got cut out of the movie. Uh, Shailene Woodley played Mary Jane. Oh, really? And oh, yeah. And they just cut that out because the That's movie so was funny. too long. Yeah, it was just too long. And all those scenes are shot. There were what, like, more than six writers on this thing? Like, mm -hmm. there, were, there were like a handful of scripts that they just shuffled together, pretty Basically. much. It's insane. That's why these scenes just start and end and have no build up to them. And characters do nothing, like Aunt May, who's just in the hospital at the end, and that's it. That's her fucking character. There's it's like a, a, it's a is it, there's like a plane in the air or something, as well. Yeah. Is that that, that movie? Plane, those two planes were gonna crash. They had nothing to do with anything that was happening with her characters yeah. at all. She just threw it in to be like emotionally oh, yeah. manipulative. I forgot about that. Very, very bizarre. Yeah. Because Electro stopped the air traffic controllers from being able to tell them that they were going to crash into each other. And then at the last moment, when they got communication again and realized they were going to crash, <laughs> the two planes turned on a dime. And they both happened to turn <laughs> opposite directions yeah. from each other so that they didn't, in fact, crash into each other from both turning. So... It all Why worked out very conveniently. In one of those planes. Yeah, yeah that would be funny. Put Aunt May up there or something. Maybe, maybe it, it Mary Jane like, was these, there. Random, these two random planes. Yeah, well, that's what happens hunt. when you don't have electricity. Cool. You don't want that to go away. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> one of my favorite aspects about this film is uh, the relationship between Peter and Harry Osborn. 
He just he literally <laughs> just the first interaction he has with them, they say, "Hey, we haven't seen each other for 10 years." And then they try to be best friends like immediately out of the blue. And then Harry's yeah, like, yeah. I'm dying. My dad much. is like 70 years old and he tells me that we have this this family curse where you start deteriorating later in the, on in life. But the instant he tells Harry this, like Harry starts deteriorating himself. He's like, oh, I guess I guess I got this now. His skin starts falling off. His dad's like yeah. 70. Like, what the fuck? And then... Uh, you just have to know about it. Once you know about it, then you start... <laughs> yeah, and, immediately. and then I guess he like just buys into this whole like holistic uh, idea where he can just be like I, f I can get Spider-Man blood and then I won't be sick ever again it's like well you don't know what Spider-Man's immune system is like first of all and second like <laughs> he, he goes up to Peter saying hey I need you to tell Spider-Man that I need his blood but there's no relationship that was ever defined between Peter and Spider-Man. He's like, you took this photo, right? Literally one photo on the Daily, Daily Bugle where he's taken the photo from like a mile away. There has been zero developed that, that Peter Parker is like Spider-Man's photographer. It's like they just lifted it from the Sam Raimi universe and thought like, oh yeah, this uh, people remember those movies, right? So this is, this is what's happening here. It's just it it never got developed. It never got developed. Between the two characters, doesn't work. No, that's why the the original uh, Sam Raimi ones. You see James Franco there the whole fucking time. Henry, oh, what's his name? Harry Osborn. You see him there the whole time. Yeah, that's why that they, they were they roommates. Work. It's because we knew. From, yes, from the very fucking beginning of the series, you understood that they were friends. And here it's just like, oh, Harry's gonna come out of nowhere from and, ten oh, years we've been ago. Best friends for ten years, we just haven't seen each other in the last. Now movie. we're the best friends no again. And and Peter, the only reason. Right. Like, Peter does anything about this? He's like, he's my best friend, I gotta help him. So you haven't seen each other in ten fucking years, you just, like, you just showed up out of the blue, and then Peter and decides... Spider-Man. Yeah, just to say <laughs> no. He shows up and, and like, no. into his house, breaks in through a window, shows up as Spider-Man, mm. is like, sorry, I can't give you my blood, goodbye, and then that makes him pissed off. Why did you even go? Why didn't you just say, like, hey... I don't actually know Spider-Man that well, or hey, right. Spider-Man decided not to to do this. Why did you do that? Why did you just show up in your costume and say no? I can't. That just pissed because him off. Because this movie is written by Alice Kurtzman and Robert <laughs> Orsi, who are the worst writers oh, yeah. ever. What else have they the done? It makes no sense. Um, they did the Star Trek in the Darkness. Nice. They did um, Alice Kurtzman directed right? the Mummy. I believe he helped Oof. write it as well. Um, they wrote some of the Transformers movies. Uh, yeah, they have a very bad resume. And yeah, this movie, it makes no sense. There's this scene where, um, For You plays. Yeah. When, when like, it's so unfitting. Just, you know, figuring out the mystery about his dad and how mm. he died. I wonder, I wonder if that song is distributed by a Sony record company. A hundred percent. I mean, either that or another label paid them to put it there. <laughs> it's clearly some kind yeah. of cross promotion. There's no way that Mark Webb like mm -hmm. heard that song or a writer of of the script heard that song and was like, "Man, this would be so appropriate and fitting. I need to create but this Sam, scene where he's discovering these too. things about his dad." Well, of course. I mean, like, but 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 in this film, it's a much more blatant, much more inappropriate and <laughs> yes. unfitting, and b way too often like that's all the movie is right like you can you can handle a bit of product placement here and there you can handle a bit of cross promotion for the music here and there but Especially when that's all movie your story. movie is and that's it it's like come on stop like give me some substance you know there should be a trade-off mm -hmm. you don't want to show up to a theater watch 20 minutes of trailers and then watch in another two hour long ad you know <laughs> you, you wanted to see a movie in there right yeah. The whole movie existed to sell that Spider-Man cinematic universe they wanted to do, where they mm -hmm. have all these different Spider-Man characters. They were going to make movies about the villains, oh, which yeah. they ended up doing anyway <laughs> with Venom. You know, they just did it anyway. It, so it was just it existed for that mainly. Like, yeah, they, they were going to do a Sinister Six a movie. movie. Just yeah. throw in as many villains and characters as you can. And Felicity Jones is in it as like a, a secretary or something. She was going to be a big part of the, the movies. 
And it was just that. It was a whole movie of that. And that's why it makes no sense and it has no structure. I love when uh, Harry Osborne is at the end of the movie and the scientist has got whatever the fuck inside the inside the like needle gun, <laughs> the injector. And, uh-huh. and and Harry's pointing a gun at him. And he's like, you got to shoot me up with that juice, doc. And the guy decides to, to <laughs> shoot it in the arm that's holding the gun at him. Like what the fuck? Yeah. And then and then there's this like mini rave party where you see this like skinny guy's shoulder blades. He's like contorting on the floor and they're flashing lights. He's like, oh, I'm changing now. And then he just decides to crawl towards the the hobgoblin suit. As though he could have picked any of them. As though he could have just as easily crawled towards the rhino suit or the the bird man. Or the, the, or yeah. <laughs> like he could have been any of them, I guess. Yeah. He just felt compelled. To crawl towards the hobgoblin suit. <laughs> and then his teeth got fucked up somehow. He got shark teeth. Pretty yeah. pretty quickly. Well, Electro was the opposite. He had the gap in his tooth and then the, the eels made it close shut. Yeah. What, <laughs> see, that. what's weird what about that, that is they didn't... That, that wasn't just like, oh yeah, later his teeth are fine and that's like a weird inconsistency. They, they did a close-up. They showed us very clearly... That there's some sort of importance, I guess, towards the fact that these electric eels fixed his fucking teeth. Why? How much yeah. do, do you think they paid animators to, you know, animate that that sequence? Just <laughs> I that don't know. Shot. How much do you think they spent on that? Uh, <laughs> I have no 10, fucking 000, idea. Twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> very good CGI. <laughs> just that too. The, the the actual character designs and like the way this movie's shot and the visual aesthetics of it are so dull. Oh yeah. The design of the rhino suit's really boring. Yeah, it's the a terrible design terrible. for the rhino suit. Like what are you Electra what the fuck are you doing awful. to the fans of the fucking comics? Like what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like Electro looks fucking badass in those comics with the green suit and the he's got like an electric like an electric cartoon symbol well, on yeah. his fucking. I wouldn't say badass, suit. but like, now it's like some guy with blue skin in like a fucking hoodie. It's like what? Yeah. <laughs> this is Electro? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It's so bad. I hope Spider Man remembers my name. Oh, he did it. <laughs> yeah. I'm mad now. His motivations made no sense. <laughs> you don't remember my name. You lied to me. Electro in that movie must be one of the, the weakest characters ever put to the silver screen. Yeah. In terms of just an, anything behind him. His performance, but, but what he has to say, that, right? how he looks. No, but that one in particular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's your film well, like, focus. Harry, Harry Osborne made no sense. I said he made, he made about as little sense as Electro did. Like no, Ralph, character like, did. If, no, if I asked you that I needed a bit of your blood to cure my born home, you'd let me, you know, have some, wouldn't you? He'd show up in a costume you, and break in and me, then say no. Hey, Ralph, you took a picture of Spider-Man once. Why don't you find him and tell him to give me his blood? <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck? I would be like, what are you talking about? I'm never going to do that. <laughs> <sighs> It's just it, the writing is so awful. Yeah. And it's so it's so unironic in how like it has no idea how stupid it is. Yeah. It's played so seriously. All there's so many things going on at once, like fucking Gwen Stacy's yeah. going to Oxford, and then they like at the beginning of the movie. Help she, what the fuck like, was that? Well, it was so that she was like leaving because they wanted like you they wanted you to care that <laughs> she was going, I guess. <laughs> And like, Wait, isn't Dennis Leary like a ghost? Yeah, yeah he keeps hallucinating yeah, Gwen Stacy's dad <laughs> because at the end of the previous movie, he's like, "Hey, now that I know you're Spider-Man, can you please not date my daughter? Because that might put her life in danger." Blah, blah, I'm gonna die. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then he's proven right. Yeah. And now yeah. he's like, and "Hey, he goes, Peter, <laughs> <laughs> Peter, I'm gonna haunt you. You shouldn't date my daughter." Uh-huh. And then Gwen Stacy tries to break up with him anyway, and she says. I break mm-hmm. up with you, Peter. Do you, do you remember that? I break up with you. I break up with you, mm-hmm. Peter. That that right there is like the perfect example of just how unclear the communication was between the writing process and then the directing and acting. Because in the script, like yeah. you could interpret that as like, I break up with you, Peter. Like I'm the one breaking up with you. Like that's clearly how it, how it was supposed to be said. But I guess... Mark Webb and then Emma Stone both misinterpreted it. And it's like, I break up with you, Peter. I break up with you. Like, 
That's not how you're supposed yeah. to say it, clearly. <laughs> like, the writing clearly called these for are, something these else. These are great actors, too. I love Emma mm-hmm. Stone. It's just the directing. Emma Stone is great. Andrew Garfield's a great actor. Like, all of them are, really. Jamie Foxx has proven he can be good. Like, yeah. it's just... It's just the directing and the writing. This is the only it's film where I here. am, like, seriously irritated by her the entire time. Like, I hate her in this <laughs> yeah, movie her so much. Makes no sense. She is so annoying in this film. Otherwise, I love her in everything else. There's people who love this movie, and they love it because of the ending, where she dies. And there's, like, the whole sad scene, and people went on and on on Twitter or whatever about how they were Yeah, because it's a reference it. to the to Yeah, because you know, it's a reference, and because, oh, I story. loved Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield. They dated in real life. It's mm-hmm. like, no, they? She, they were fucking <laughs> awful characters. And that scene was so bad when she died. It's like, oh, oh yeah. When, when, when he uses the web shooter and it shows it as a hand reaching out for her, like That's zooms the into the, the tip movie. of it. It's the funniest like, shot. what? Why did you do that? <laughs> we were all laughing at that. It's so funny. There's so much. There's this, this film is so dense. There's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Dance with shit. Yeah. The shittiest, <laughs> corny shit all together yeah. in one. Mark Webb is Fuck dense. this movie. I, I hate this one. <laughs> but I'm glad I watched them because they, they reminded me like how good those old ones Yeah. Are. To Sam watch Rainey them was. in the same day is they like, it. it makes it so much clearer. Yeah, that's why I did it. You got to see how a master does it and then how a hack does it. <laughs> I think like even even the flagship scenes even the ones that they promoted and shared all over social media and shit like the fight scene between spidey and electro even that scene it's just like it's so poorly filmed like every time you cut to yeah. the crowd of extras it's, it's, it's like so what it's it's so fake it's so fake and it, it's so unconvincing yes. like every time you see see the extras whether they're running across the screen or like the ones that were on that like makeshift little stadium stand that was by itself for some reason i don't know what they were doing there but but like Mm -hmm. everything feels Mm -hmm. so detached from everything else it's like it's not the same day clearly you know it it doesn't feel like they're in a real location everything feels like it's in a computer somehow you know when everything like pauses time and the camera like floats around it's like whoa looks like something i don't know somebody fucking created in after effects you know it's really weird. Because they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, even like the end scene between Electro and Spider-Man, like their final battle, and it's all CG, and they're just jumping from these like electric things. It's it's like who cares? It's just so dull. It's like watching a video game. Like I, I have no stake in this story. I don't care about these characters. It's a dull movie. Never a and dull moment. Sam Raimi's aren't. The action scenes in the Sam Raimi ones are exciting. At least, like, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about them. But the action scenes in this movie are so fucking boring. Yeah. Do you like how when he, this Electro was jumping between the power th- the things that it played the Itsy Bitsy Spider <laughs> in dubstep? Oh, yeah, that no. too. They no, were, like, that trying to, like, it was Baby Driver or something, trying to sync up yeah, like, what music the hell? during the action scenes. <laughs> It's so bad. I love how he was able to travel anywhere he wanted to from the power lines because mm-hmm. he got turned into pure electricity. But that little chip that the yeah. the scientist gave him at the facility somehow also got turned into electricity. And he somehow also spawned like a full rubber suit because this is a movie for kids and you can't have his dong out like Watchmen. You know, like yeah, he's got exactly. he's got a rubber suit on that also turns into electricity. And this physical chip was there when he like overloaded at the end. And it seemed like the only reason that chip was on his head was so that when when they did the thing that killed him at the end is so that they could have that close up shot of it saying like overload, like Max explode, <laughs> you know, so people understood what was <laughs> happening, I guess. Yeah, and then the chip it. falls on the ground and he's dead and the chip is there. It's like, did that? physical chip travel to this location through power lines what yes of course it did because he's awesome do you love how emma stone showed up to the crime scene before the police and stole a cop car somehow 
<laughs> yeah, because she's a great character. She's really useful. She is super uh, capable. I guess uh, you guys want to give your <laughs> closing thoughts on this film? Yeah, that's that's what this movie does to you. It's, it's awesome. amazing. <laughs> it's truly amazing. Amazingly <laughs> shit, yeah. <laughs> Spectacular. I don't know. I give it like a two or a three out of ten. It's hilarious. It's really, really bad. It's really, really funny. Yeah, I give it half star. It's vomit as a movie. <laughs> yeah, what what brings it up from a one? Entertainment value. I find it hilarious. I think it's one of the funniest <laughs> I guess, movies. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I just think it's a failure. And it's yeah. hilarious, but yeah. At times, it's hilarious, but yeah. One out of five, absolutely. <laughs> It pisses me off it made so much money as well. Oh, yeah. That angers me. And it's so weird that they yeah, decided to stop to that. Uh, yeah. I guess it like kind of underperformed. I thought it I thought it did great box office wise. I'm not really sure what happened. But there's some reason why they just decided to ditch that that universe. And I don't really understand Because Marvel why. came along and were like, hey, look at the money we can give you, bro. Oh, yeah. Check this Probably deal out, why. bro. <laughs> I mean, they didn't do that well. I'm looking it up now. 708 million. Which is, you know, that's a lot of money. That's not what they're looking for. They want like a billion. Well, how much did the first Amazing so, Spider-Man make? The first Amazing Spider-Man made like uh, 50, 60 million more. Oh, really? Okay. Well, yeah, I guess that's an issue, isn't it? When a sequel doesn't make more. Yeah. I guess they probably yeah. spent more money yeah, on the second one. It was less money. Yeah, the sequel, yeah, the sequel made less money. Meanwhile, the, the old ones did great. Like, domestically and worldwide. Yeah. So... I guess yeah. let's uh, let's talk about our boy Raimi, uh, Spider Man One. N- you know, I think oh, cool. it's I think he pronounced his name Rami or something. I think yeah, I don't think it's, it's Rami. Rami. Malik, but, yeah, eh, that's close enough. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so these are good movies. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk specifically yeah. about the first one. Okay, let's start with Spider Man One, two thousand and two. Sam yeah. Raimi's first Spidey Man. Pretty epic. <laughs> to me, <laughs> to me, epic. Like Aquaman is it more epic than Aquaman? It is epic. Come uh, on, you have to admit, Ralph, it is. Epic. It is genuine. Mostly epic because of Danny Elfman's terrific score. Like that's the best yeah. Spider Man. It's amazing. Um, I agree. To me, the the glue that holds the film together for me is Willem Dafoe because Spider Man One is dumb holy shit is it dumb it has the corniest <laughs> fucking dialogue it, it everything that happens is so stupid there's but... a lot of stupid things for sure <laughs> Willem Dafoe <laughs> it's incredible <laughs> he he's so he's just so hamming it up he, he's chewing the scenery like <laughs> crazy that yeah that scene yeah. where he's talking to himself in the mirror oh I it's, love it's it. so funny <laughs> love it <laughs> he, he sells it he totally wins because Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm I'm not mad about Toby Maguire to be honest. I don't, I don't think I'm he's a very good about protagonist. Either. Um, not me either. Yeah, but Willem Dafoe boy, and when he shows up in the sequels too, it's just yes. <laughs> good yeah, evening, Spider Man. He's the best actor. He's the best actor in this movie. Yeah. With uh, J.K. Simmons. Being oh right yeah. Now. The actress who yeah. plays Aunt May too. I like the actress who plays yeah. Aunt May. She's great. And Toby Maguire does a great like first iteration of Spider Man. You know. Like he was very believable as a nerd. He was likable. He he always did the right thing. You know, he was trying his best to be a good person. Yeah, he he's good. At, he's really good as a nerd, but he's almost too good at being a nerd because he's like such a dorky Spider Man as well. All of his one liners mm-hmm. as Spider Man are just like, that's not funny, man. That's just <laughs> lame. <laughs> They're always so incredibly lame whenever he has any kind of banter with any of his villains. <laughs> did it make you want to beat him up? I like that. Push him against the lockers? It did make me want to beat him up. Give him yeah, a swirly. I was happy when Green Goblin tried to impale him. Well, well like you were saying, Alex, like, the this movie is stupid, and all these Spider-Man movies are somewhat stupid, but these movies, the Sam Raimi ones, have this self-awareness about it. And they they use it to their advantage to be funny and and they're actually entertaining movies. Yeah. Unlike the Mark Webb ones. It's not stupid out of being lazy and unfocused. It's stupid because it's charmingly cartoonish. 
Yeah, it's you know? the, the source it's material. Playful. Not to call comic books stupid, but they're yes, they're way more playful with the logic, and they're not as realistic, and they're silly and whatever. They have goofy characters like the Green Goblin in the silly green suit. Yeah, but they sell it. And Who they looks it terrible? Work. Green Goblin looks <laughs> awful. His costume is is laughably oh, yeah. bad. It's like out of Power Rangers. He's like talking like to Spider Man, and he and he's like leaning against the the air conditioner or whatever. Yeah, it's so bad. He so, could have taken his mask off yeah, at that totally point. Also, that didn't make any sense. He, he easily could have taken his mask off. Right. I'm sure you guys know they were gonna uh, use like some prosthetic makeup on the face for Green Goblin to make him like a moat and have some. With facial expression, which would have been cool. There's actually footage of it online if you want to find it. Oh, really? Maybe I'll link it. Yeah, please. Yeah, it, it looks He's got the perfect face for but it because he looks like a goblin. It it's just too hard. Yeah. But they just one with a plastic suit. <laughs> so I'm curious if our opinions on this one have changed compared to how it was in our memories. Like, do we like this one more or less or the same as how we remember the this same. one? I, I would say the same because like there's more yeah. things that I noticed about it that are stupid for sure, you know things where I'm like ah that's dumb, and that doesn't make sense, but I mean it's still very charming like the like you said the music I think that's the absolute best Spider-Man score that has ever been written mm -hmm. for you sure know, it brings it's it amazing. together super well and it's also something you have to remember is like it's a product of its time. This is a film that is like the perfect balance between 90s schlock and like actually good 2000s plus superhero filmmaking. It the the, the yeah. cinematography is incredibly creative and impressive. Like I love Sam Raimi for that. You when you connect it to like his Evil Dead films even. Like the, he's always shown a really keen sense for for expressing how to film a, a scene creatively and i i love that yeah. about it and his transitions too yeah his transitions are awesome this one had the best transitions for sure yeah he's just Did you know how many jump scares are in this movie <laughs> oh yeah this whole trilogy is full of jump scares all the time yeah. like they just flash things <laughs> yeah. on the screen like skulls in this in spider-man one they like just flash skulls on the screen when he's um, yeah <laughs> Just after he's been bitten and he's on the floor, and they just flash him on the screen for a little little ah! scare. And there's that part where he has a bad dream, and they just flash yeah. <laughs> the Green Goblin on the screen, like screaming. <laughs> yeah, that's that what got funny. me because it's like, why are you jump scaring me, boy? Because the Green yeah. Goblin's scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was the one I actually liked uh, more. The, the, oh, all really? the other ones I've changed my opinion on. Yeah. Okay. I always remember this one being kind of the lamest. Um. And Out of the there three? are lame aspects. Yeah. Not even it. You remember no this one being the lamest out of the three. Not oh, out no. of the two. Uh, ig ignoring um ignoring like the third my opinions one. haven't changed that much on Spider Man three, but okay. with Spider Man one, I remember it being worse than okay. than I found it to. I found it really entertaining, but I couldn't really figure out if I was laughing at it or with it sometimes because Oh yeah. The the uh the visual effects are fucking terrible a lot of the time like they, yeah, they, some they have aged not great ones. really that's badly. the only thing that's aged very poorly is the visual effects they're very yeah. they look like the spider-man video game that came out around the same time <laughs> and uh, there's that shot where mary jane's hair is flowing in the wrong direction when they're they're swimming oh, yeah. <laughs> in front of <laughs> <laughs> That's like, there's little details like that. There's loads of stupid, dumb things like that in the movie. I found it yeah. really funny, though. I found it totally hilarious all the way through. Yeah, that, that's what made me like really change my mind on on this one in particular. Whereas I kind of have other other feelings about its sequels. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, um, I was surprised by that too. How did you How did you guys feel about uh, this film? I guess. Uh... The actors being definitely not high school students. Uh, yeah, that's another example. Yeah. Really stupid. Yeah. yeah. But everyone was that way. Everyone everyone looked like they were 20. <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's, it was, it's, it was all right. It's annoying, and I feel like it's becoming less acceptable as time goes on. 
No, but for the tone of that movie, it was okay. The very, you know, over the top tone. It doesn't it's it's hilarious. Flash, it doesn't ruin the, ruin the movie. Guy. <laughs> yeah, in that first no. scene where they're in the like science lab with the, the spiders, the, the teacher looks younger than the students. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Flash is like taller than him. <laughs> I like I like when the spider bites him, and then it goes to the TV screen, and it's like new species completed. It's like was there a ca- was there a camera inside <laughs> Peter Parker's veins or something like was was this connected yeah. to him what, what was that that was really weird that didn't make any sense thank you for mentioning the spider bite cuz i compared cuz i watched the amazing spider man first before yeah. this new spider oh nice so i compared oh, the spider bite scene the spider bite scene in the amazing spider man is like a flat shot of of uh what's his name andrew garfield just fucking like getting bit and he's like ow and this movie there's like a badass close-up on the spider as it bites and it zooms in and there's this nice fucking oh, crunch yeah. noise and like very creative it was a real spider it's by amazing. the way it's very creative and exciting You're like holy shit it just got bit and it's this big deal you know that's the kind of filmmaking in this that that just it's the reason it's aged so well that yeah. people still think it's so entertaining. It's expressive, so. you know. It's it's important, yeah. you know. There's purpose, mm-hmm. creativity, right? Like what the fuck, Mark it's Webb? Exciting. <laughs> How did you guys feel about um, the dialogue? For me, it, it jumped between being <laughs> so bad that it's good, but sometimes genuinely bad. Like yeah, an example of of a line that I I think is really funny <laughs> is um when Peter gets in just after having his spider bite and Aunt May says, do you want to have a bite? And he says, no thanks, had a bite. <laughs> and runs up to his room. It's so corny. Oh, yeah. The, the, I love oh, it. No, I like that, though. It's charming. It's yeah, charming. It feels very intentional. Yeah. yeah. And even though it made me laugh, it always made me laugh when it was corny. Yeah. That so kind of like, stuff okay, is good, it. yeah. But, like, yeah. It, it does make it somewhat difficult to... I don't know, really feel or emote for any of these characters when they're so, they are so two dimensional. Um, we haven't talked about Mary Jane yet. I, I think she sucks in this trilogy. Oh, yeah. I, I fucking hate her character. I don't like her. She's, she's not only like a nasty person in the movies, but yeah. her actual place in the story is she's just like a, a device exactly. for characters to, to act around. Basically. I mean, and right. she's just a, you know, she's just uh, captured by the villains all the time. Um, it's just mm-hmm. super lame. She's, yeah. She's really a very inessential. one-dimensional character. There's not a lot going on with her, especially in this one. She might as well be in the 1960s cartoon, the way her character is written. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And I that's, can't that's that. somewhat intentional, but I it's still, it's it's not like she's a good character. If it was intentional, that makes it worse. Because mm-hmm. like, if they intentionally made her bad, at this point in time, this was like the best superhero movie like every other example you could possibly think of for a superhero movie the same things that we complain about they did it like even worse which is just fascinating to think about yeah. like that this was like a huge step in the right direction mm-hmm. and aside from the spider first movie this is still the best version of mary jane we have probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably in the spider-man movies yeah the spider-verse movie they did gwen stacy well but i mean emma stone who, who was in data? Yeah. yeah. The other two. I don't know. It, like the 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 tone of the film is like so obviously playful and jokey, and especially with J.K. Simmons's scenes, like those are all hilarious. He does an amazing job. Yeah. I find it hilarious. He's great. He's great in all three. I find it hilarious that in the Amazing Spider-Man two, they didn't even try to replicate J.K. Simmons because it's like mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think anybody would fucking want that don't even you know, touch like, it. No. there yeah. is exactly. one j jonah jameson and it's jk simmons so they just had him like mm-hmm. email spider-man instead of talking to him <laughs> <laughs> yeah they don't even mention him in the the new ones oh yes, yeah this news is dead or <laughs> papers are dead newspapers yeah i don't that know makes sense does he have a podcast in the video game it's yeah a newspaper yeah he does <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> like fun. alex jones <laughs> that's quite funny there yeah that was clever I love the uh, macho man Randy Savage cameo <laughs> the uh, Bruce, Campbell. Oh, yeah. Bruce Campbell there was a bit of homophobia cameo. in that scene wasn't there <laughs> a little bit yeah <laughs> there, there was a Joey Diaz cameo in the second Spider-Man I totally forgot about that mm-hmm. there's a lot of good 
good cameos in here. And Stan Lee. This is the first movie to have like Stan Lee cameos. Oh, really? Is Link on your miss it though, yeah. Well, yeah, it's like on the screen for like half a second in this one. He just pulls a girl out of the way. Uh, oh, yeah. They used to be way more subtle than they are now. Now he's yeah. like, he has his own fucking scenes now. I mean, not anymore. But... Now they write them so that, that people clap when they see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Marvel's filmed the next 20 of them, though. I'm pretty sure he'll sh keep showing up. Yeah. They'll, they'll make him in a CGI thing. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just recreate him using old lines. <laughs> they got him to say every single word possible. <laughs> Stanley will be in the movies for the next 100 years. Don't worry, everybody. I guess uh, before we... Uh... Go on to the uh, Spider-Man Two. There's just a few. There's just a few things in my notes that I kind of want to mention in in point form, I guess. When when Willem Dafoe has his like crazy freak out and and like goes on a murder spree, and then James mm -hmm. Franco finds him. He's like <laughs> he's he's wearing like business clothes and a tie. So like at some point during his blackout, he decided to put clothes back on, <laughs> even yeah. though he's passed out on the floor. <laughs> I found that kind of funny. I really enjoyed the uh, kind of like comedic break when he's trying to, you know, go web, like all, all these different hand signals that he's trying to do <laughs> to make the web come out. And it reminded yeah. me a lot of like Army of Darkness. There were moments in that film that it just felt mm -hmm. very reminiscent to that. I loved the uh, explosion to graduation caps scene transition. I thought that that was really cool. Yeah, that was good. Oh yeah, <laughs> MJ is a fucking idiot for not recognizing Peter's voice. Come on, and he says the same line to her like I right know. after too. He's like, "I was just in the neighborhood." He's like, "Come on, I'm making it obvious for you." It's like <laughs> you don't realize that that's Peter Parker. Okay. Oh yeah, and then and then one last thing I I kind of want to point out is I I love the uh, it, stupidity in in terms of the logic of Green Goblin being able to lure Spider-Man into a burning building just by doing that like anywhere <laughs> in the city. Like apparently Spider-Man's got a hundred percent success crime rate. And you can just you can just <laughs> light a building on fire and anywhere in the city and you you know he'll show up. Like he didn't know where Spider-Man was located at that point. It's just like a random burning building. Maybe he did it a few times. Maybe he burned down like 20 buildings and stayed inside and waited 20 minutes like ah spider-man's not gonna show up this time i guess I'll, i guess i'll burn down another building he screams like a woman to try to, <laughs> to try to lure him in i found that hilarious but yeah that's those are all my little point form notes of, of things i just wanted to to mention yeah. and none of, the, none of those things would affect the rating for me like, those yeah. are all minor things it's so weird and i forgive them because the cartooniness and the, the fun of it yeah i know there's a lot of people that would probably criticize us because there there are aspects to this film where if they were found in other films we might be a bit more harsh and critical but i think that overall the most important thing to take note so. of is the overall tone and also considering you know it's it's not a movie that's just logical inconsistencies and cheesiness like there's a lot of great filmmaking to go in there as well like there's so much Yes. There's so much substance there. And again, like the, the, the score is just something that holds it together so well. It's of quality. Yeah. <laughs> it's quality filmmaking. It's a piece that's it, it's exciting and has fun characters in it. And it's entertaining. I mean, it, this movie was a fucking huge hit. Yeah. And it was one of the two films, X-Men is the other one, that really started this whole superhero age we're living in now yeah pretty much the only movies that do well are the superhero movies this is the start of it and this is just a great movie i think mm -hmm. yeah um I'm, I'm not quite on the same level as you guys um i mean i can't say it has substance i just think it's a a really bad story told with like a, a masterful presentation i think mm -hmm. that that's what it is to me um i don't know if i can give it credit for being dumb and cartoony and not taking itself seriously while at the same time having villains with the worst motivations like green goblin's yeah. motivations they make no sense oh yeah what he's trying to do is just like he just does it because and i mean like wants revenge <laughs> no, but, but he, he he's completed his revenge 
arc like by halfway point in the movie and then he's just like okay now i'm going to torture spider-man i guess because i want him to join me the goblin gas <laughs> makes him evil okay they said right. at the beginning of the movie that the side effects were that it you, makes you him crazy yeah a crazy uh, the person. worst like terrible explanation for a, a villain yeah, like that, that, that sucks when i Absolutely. say substance i'm not talking about like the script per se <laughs> I'm talking it like I'm talking literally about the presentation, <laughs> and as you said, like it's very well presented, and that's that's what I mean by substance. Yeah. Like presentation matters a lot to me. Like I, I value yeah. it very highly. I can I, I to me there needs to be more of a balance. Yeah, I, I I just can't sit there with. I find James Franco in these movies to be particularly awful. He is given like some <laughs> yeah. of the, some of the worst di- some of the bad. worst dialogue. Um, and that that's what I mean. Like. Gives up. Oh, yeah. It's like a balance where it's like a fifty-fifty balance where there's a, a line of dialogue that is so like purposefully goofy, so corny. Like there's that <laughs> there's that quip where um, Spider-Man retorts to Green Goblin saying something like, "It's you who's out, Gobby, out of your <laughs> mind." <laughs> like dumb, dumb shit. Like I love that kind of thing. I think that kind of tone is brilliant. But my issue is when there is really hyper clunky exposition that's in there all the time um it, mm-hmm. it it's it's very it's very overt in a lot of ways that i found kind of frustrating at times because mm-hmm. it's like it doesn't take much to give characters simple motivations that make sense just to drive the the plot along cuz the the real hook is how the film looks and the way it's presented but it, it's too frustrating to me when now that we do have films like spider-verse which has the the a similar tone. It's not taking itself too seriously. It is self aware, but it also has characters that have some weight and de- depth behind them. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can't I can't really you know get behind some of the character writing and the plot of of these movies. That's totally fine, and it all just matters how mm-hmm. how much you know each any of those aspects uh, affect you, right? Like I yeah yeah. D- despite how little sense. And how stupid, you know, something like the <laughs> the end fight scene is, where the goblin like does a flip for no reason, and then like tries tries to ram his his fucking yeah, what's his actual plan into himself? He would have himself either like, way. Yeah. I know. I think it was <laughs> yeah. supposed to be like a exactly. kamikaze thing, but and, but I love how he's just yeah, like first oh. into him. <laughs> he just says <laughs> oh, and then dies, and then you know, it, it, it despite all that, like the presentation of the scene, like. When when you watch that again, it's like there's so much of like Sam Raimi's style in there. There's so much of the original Evil Dead trilogy in that scene, you know. And I I love how the music completely cuts out and and like it 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 still manages to convey the emotions that it's trying to, even if there are laughable moments for sure. I'm still able to take yeah. much of it seriously somehow, and I I think that that's you know a a, a testament to the actual presentation. And the filmmaking involved, and that's part of why I love it so much. I just I find it odd when like, after his death scene, his last words are, "Don't tell Harry." I know. He says to Peter, <laughs> "Plot device." Like, what? what? You, don't, you don't have any fucking right to say that to me. You just try to kill me. It, it, it makes <laughs> that kind of thing just like what well, makes no sense within the like the context of the characters, and it's so unbelievable. Yeah. All right. What would you give it out of five? <laughs> Yeah, I want to hear what you guys give it for, I go. I would give it a uh, at least a six, maybe a seven. Pro- definitely, definitely not an eight. Definitely not a five. Mm, I give it a four out of five. Okay. Well, I, I gave it a three stars out of five, so basically the same as you, Adam. So. Okay. Cool. I'd okay. like. Yeah, I'm comfortable with a seven. I think that I'll I'll put that on yeah. my that IMDb fighting. if I didn't already. <laughs> <laughs> All that fighting, you gave it the same rating. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's just, it sounded, yeah, I wanted to make sure the my feelings were put out there because there are some things I think yeah. are, are a problem hey, with it. It's totally valid, too. I saw those things. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hang on, so, Spider-Man 2? Big fat 7 on IMDb. Uh, yes, yeah, Sp- Spider-Man 2. This is the most two, interesting one to the me. The second one. What do you guys think? What did you think of that one? Was it better? Worse? Uh, I thought it was worse. <laughs> interesting. how I remember it, anyway. No! <laughs> I thought it was worse than how I remember it, yeah. yeah. Worse than you remember, but is it worse than the first film is, I guess, what we're trying to figure out. Uh, uh, I think it's better in both ways. Yeah. I, um, it's a better film. 
I think it was better than I remember it. The the corniness, because the last time I saw it, I remember it being very, very corny, even more so than the first one. But the corniness, I loved it in this one, and I thought it was really funny and charming and, and self-aware. Yeah. And it's it's a, I think it's a better film in every way than the first one. I think all the characters have more to do. I think the villain is way better and way more defined. Oh, yeah. I think the action is way better. The effects are way better. The music is so great. Like, everything they needed to improve, they did. Man. And I think it's just a really exciting, fucking fantastic movie. I think even the music got better because they added the, uh, the, the theme that plays when they're carrying him through the train and that gets like reprised oh, yeah. in the film mm-hmm. and they call it back. Well, and it's, it's so, scene, yeah, like they, he wrote new themes to the, the film and they all work so well and they're consistent and yeah. reincorporated. And I, I love it the so much. The visual effects are super cool. They're a Aside lot better. from the CGI, which looks much better. Yeah. Know, but even, like, the Dr. Octopus arms. Like, oh, yeah. Like, fat, like, how they cut from practical to CG. Yeah, Sam Raimi to, did an like, awesome you know, job with that. some weird puppet sure. rig. Man. Yeah, it was really impressive. That, I, I, I'm going to mention Evil Dead again, because during that um, during that uh, scene where he's killing all, all of those... Uh, like surgeons, <laughs> um, the best scene in the movie. Oh yeah, that scene's that, that scene's awesome. fucking incredible. That, that's like that fantastic. One of the best fucking scenes. Like during that, He's having the most during fun. that moment, like there are so many specific shots that are direct references to the Evil Dead movies, and just seeing this yeah. at, at yeah. this age now, being able to get all of them, just being like, holy shit, it was there the whole time. It was awesome. Like it, the, there's so much. It was really effective. Oh, super the, effective. The POV shots. Yeah. yeah, the the girl and her fingernails on the fucking floor. It's like it's cartoonish, <laughs> but it's like still super effective. It's still like fucked up. You're like, yeah, holy shit! Watching, it was like, you fuck know? when the nails came in. Like that's horrific to see, especially when you're a kid. Yeah, like how 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 much better of a job can you possibly do in a PG thirteen superhero movie conveying that level of intensity? You know, like, I don't know if I've seen it done <laughs> yeah, better in a PG-13 superhero no, movie. Like, that it, that was just fantastic. It was genuinely terrifying, that yeah, scene. it was it, awesome. It is, uh-huh. It's bone-chilling. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I want from my fucking villains. It seems like that. Yeah. Hear that, Mark Webb? <laughs> you fucking... <laughs> he doesn't hear anything. <laughs> so, um, there are two cuts of this movie. There's the yeah. Spider-Man original, like, theatrical cut. Yeah, but the... I forgot that there was an extended. Yeah, there's an ex- extended one called Spider-Man 2.1, which is a terrible name, <laughs> but you can watch it on <laughs> iTunes or whatever. There's just an option in the main menu. So I've seen both. Was that in HD? Or Don't what? watch Spider-Man 2.1. Yeah, it's in 4K. Oh. Don't watch Spider-Man 2.1. It fucking sucks. Oh, really? It, 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 it ruins the pace of the movie. It adds, <laughs> it adds so many scenes where... They changed the punchline or joke of the scene to be like a three minute long, just oh, never wow. ending gag. That you know really? the ele- like the elevator scene, for example, where in oh, the original okay. in the original he just says something like "nice Spidey outfit" or something, right? Oh, that's funny. In the two point one version, he's like, "Hey, I work for an ad agency. Uh, let's uh, <laughs> brainstorm some ideas about. Uh, have, let's make, get you a TV show. Let's uh, put you on serial. Stuff like that." And it just goes on and on. And there's loads of that kind of thing. And they add more action to the train sequence, which, again, is totally unnecessary. He's like, Doc Ock holds him off the side of the train, and then a train hits into him, and then he just pops up again down the track. It's 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 totally unnecessary. And ruins the pace of the movie. Do not watch it oh, okay. at, at all costs. Right. It, it does ruin. Okay. It. The original one, though, is obviously a, a lot better in, yeah. in terms of that kind of thing. But my, I, I had weird issues with it, similar to Spider-Man One. Oh, I, yeah. I was seeing similar things. Like, I, I don't think Doc Ock is a very good villain in terms of his motivation. I think his, his, his presence is very good. The acting is very mm-hmm. good. The, the, the effects for his arms are, it's fantastic. It, it's, it's, it's amazing. He has a sympathetic angle to him, too, which is something a lot of these villains don't have. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and for superhero movies, this is one of the first ones to have, like, a sympathetic uh, villain who has, like, a tragic past. You know? Yeah, I, I'm just saying for for then it might have been impressive, but now we we have seen better. We we have better yep. than, than this now. Um, 
so I, I can't really forgive it for that, especially considering how good I found um, Doc Ock's motivation in the in the video game that came out last year. I thought that was a, a great take that was way more believable for that kind of character. I thought that interpretation is much, much more intelligent than... than I found the them Raimi to one. be similar. Not like, not similar motivations, but yeah. like similar on my scale of motivations and how they could I find, be. Yeah, I just find the, the idea of um, kind of fighting your own body and having to invent these arms yeah. instead of it kind of being an afterthought in um, the Raimi one. He was controlling the fusion core. Yeah, it's like, hey, look, <laughs> I've, I've created this, this mini sun. Also, I've also made robot <laughs> arms that I wear on my back. And it's like, that would have been enough on its own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it is kind of fucking funny because, like, realistically, if you if you have this device, that, this fusion core that has a mini sun in it, like, you could probably, you could probably automate that shit. Like, you, you just have these arms so you can control it. Why don't you have, like, a computer operating yeah, those arms? arms? Or why don't you use a it's joystick? It's not just arms. It's these fucking arms that you need a chip to, like, yeah. control so that it doesn't take over your whole body. You could get, like, four people <laughs> controlling the arms, you know? You could have, like, just a mouse and keyboard. Each person gets one. You know, just train them. I don't know. Yeah. You'd, think, you'd think that that would just be automated in the first place. But... But that doesn't matter. It's a fun <laughs> fucking comic book movie, and he has robot <laughs> arms, goddammit, because he needs to make the fucking sun. Why are we arguing? Why are we nitpicking this excellent movie? I, I don't think it is nitpicking, though, because it's it is you can't not say that it's stupid. Like it's so dumb. No, but it knows it's stupid. It's so clearly clearly knows that it's stupid. This is the exact conversation oh, that I wanted to have happen <laughs> for for I, reviewing I can't, these films. I can't accept it's that so though because it's. Fun. it's it's the same reason I can't stand Deadpool, because the movie knows like things suck about it, and they're like, "Wow, look how bad the writing is." And it's Deadpool like, Deadpool is way more yeah, bland it, than yeah. this. Deadpool doesn't try as hard. No, I'm I'm using that as <laughs> no, an example in terms of pointing at yourself and saying, "Look how bad this is." Doesn't make it not bad to me. I I don't know if that's really the case for Spider Man too. I, I wouldn't use the word bad. I would just say this is a. It's not trying to be the Dark Knight. It's not trying to be deep or make you like depressed or say some grand statement about society. <laughs> it's like just a fucking great movie about Spider-Man. Spider-Man is a very simple character, a very fun character, and you have him dealing with shit like balancing his his college life and his relationships and being a superhero, and that was all interesting. And it's just a fun fucking movie. And it's so well made. I would I would say it's again like the first movie. It's it's charmingly cartoonish. You know, it's very much like yeah. oh yeah, this is like this is comic booky logic in a sense. Yeah, like I don't think it's bad writing. I wasn't cringing ever. I wasn't like oh god, that's fucking horrible. I was like no, I was at some it. of the dialogue. Yeah, I'm I'm halfway. Especially uh, basically anything James Franco said. It's just so it's, it's, awful. Okay, James Franco's bad. I'll give you James Franco. <laughs> He's and so Mary dreadful. Jane sometimes. Who are two major characters in the movie. Mary Jane was terribly written in this one. She was so much worse. I think. <laughs> yeah. Like she's so, like That's what I mean. She's terribly written. Yeah. In all of them, she's terribly she's written. She's so selfish in this film. Yeah. <laughs> I, she's such a bad character. I fucking can't she's stand a terrible any scene person. With her in. <laughs> she's just so so unlikable. It's like, what do any of these guys see in her? That fucking she's, astronaut she's didn't just, deserve any hot. of that shit. They just they chose a guy that like kind of looked like he might be a bad guy to be the the astronaut <laughs> that she tries to marry. Yeah, and then it's like when when she ditches yeah. him, you know, it, part of the, part part of you feels like yeah, that guy deserves it, but he didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> like he, no, he didn't. She he doesn't deserve that at she all. Daddy issues. She's just That's she's it. just a terrible person. <laughs> she gets to kiss whoever she wants, and then you know, it's just overthinking it. Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like I I can't. <laughs> I, I can't give it a pass when it's the exact same thing I rag on current superhero yeah. movies for when they no. when they have inconsistencies like Those that. Those current superhero movies, so many of them are so fucking bland and not funny and boring. This is this is so not that. Well, I think you can still recognize yeah, the flaws. Some plot elements that are corny because the director actually has a voice. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, it, but that makes a huge difference with something like this. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you 
can should ignore all of the flaws though like you can still recognize the flaws and then say by the end of it like oh yeah the achievements outweighed the flaws and i still love it or something like that but that does i, I don't think it means like you should just pass off every you know instance of cheesiness or b bad writing or you know things that could be improved I, th I think that you should still acknowledge those things but if that's what you're going for and that's clearly what they were going for and i think it's a good choice ultimately because i think it works for this piece then like i, I don't i don't want to criticize it for being that it's when it's not trying to be that it depends on how much of it was intentional because like obviously it was intentional but i don't think it was like a fine-tuned like parody I, I don't think it was like a a yeah. commentary that, on the genre issue, the third or anything has. that's that's way more an issue of the spider-man 3 yeah. than i think this yeah one, we'll get to that where the studio interference and multiple voices definitely make the tone a little more jumbled and fucked up yeah but i i think this movie strikes that perfect balance between actually having an, an emotional impact and character development and also just being really fun and capturing that same tone as the first one. Yeah, I do think that it has a, a great balance. Yeah. It is, you know, incredibly cheesy and, and corny, but it is also very well shot, very creative and fun, and and just an absolute joy, I think. Yeah. Something about these movies, too, that the, the new ones fail at, the, the Mark Webb ones, is that the New Yorkers in the movie actually help Spider-Man and play part in, like, helping him yeah. succeed. Like in Even in the one, first like, one, they too. They help in the subway. In the first one, they throw garbage at the Green Goblin. Like, yeah, that's a I love that shit. That, I, I like, really the, enjoy the spider that. Oh, the Spider-Man is rallied behind by, by these people in the city. Yeah. I, I love that, too. But, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Because that's something none of the rest of the movies don't nail at all. Between the crane scene in the first Amazing Spider-Man and the plane scene in the second one, which were both just awful. Yeah. But Homecoming gets get some of that right. But yeah. How'd you guys feel about the uh, losing my powers subplot? I liked it. I found it a bit mm. weird. It, like, like logically, it makes no sense at all because they just yeah. go away and come back. But. It was like thematically the point of the story is he had to get his life together. Yeah, thematically so, it makes sense, even, but I mean, yeah, it's just he didn't even want to be Spider Man, and if he didn't want to be Spider Man, then he doesn't deserve the power, and so it just kind of went away. There's just something I liked about that. It did kind of just feel like thrown in for conflict, but it's kind of it's weird. Thrown in. It, it fits very well into the story. It just they didn't explain it at all. I think that's a huge part of the story. Yeah, it's him losing his power. They, they do kind of explain it. There's the scene with the doctor where they yeah. kind of sits down and <laughs> explains it somewhat. Yeah, what does the doctor say? It's like, yeah, yeah, losing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, within the logic of the movie, though, that that's an explanation for why it's happening. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're shown that it's because he can't balance his life. He can't figure out, you know, whether he should be Spider-Man all the time or Peter more and, you know. That that that's mm -hmm. the real fun of Spider Man. That's the real allure of him. Is him trying to yeah. figure out the balance between you know his relationship with Mary Jane and getting his homework done on time right. while also being a crime fighter. And that that is like the mm -hmm. the core and heart of Spider Man. So in that sense, it does get that aspect of the character uh, right. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about the the amazing scene where pizza uh, time Peter confesses to Aunt May? Well, pizza time, but that was a great <laughs> moment. But. When when Peter tells Aunt May about like how he's responsible for Uncle Ben's death, yeah, and that scene is fucking really emotional. And there's very few scenes in most superhero movies that get that kind of level. Do you guys feel the same way about that part? Yeah, yeah, I I I feel like the the whole plot with Uncle Ben dying, you know, are, although there are you know cheesy and illogical aspects to it sprinkled here and there. It is still very effective, and I think that part of the reason why it was so ineffective in The Amazing Spider-Man is not just because the presentation was much poorer, but also, you know, like, we just saw it in the, <laughs> you know, the, the Sam Raimi trilogy. It was so soon after where it's just like, come on, you know, like, we, we, we're all familiar with this. We don't need, like, another origin story Uncle Ben death thing. But yeah, I, I, I think it <laughs> worked out well good. in this. <laughs> Like, the, yeah. there was some purpose and emotional weight to it. Yeah, I thought Aunt May was, was actually one of the best sort of actors in the movie. She was kind She's of the great. heart of it, whereas James yeah, Franco, absolutely. like, sucks and uh, 
Mary Jane sucks. Aunt May and Peter's <laughs> dynamic was the real, What's the real the heart of it. Who plays Mary Jane? I don't oh, know. Kirsten Dunst. Oh yeah. Oh, Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, so. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Aunt yeah. May for a second. I didn't realize he said <laughs> Mary J. I love you, MJ. She got von Triered. Uh-huh. Yeah, she did. <laughs> How do you feel about Tobey Maguire's yelling? <laughs> yeah, I love it. He like I this love, it... I love the gif of him at the end of the movie when Mary Jane's about to get crushed by that fucking thing in the warehouse and he just goes, ah! <laughs> Yeah. This this film has the best wealth of unintentionally hilarious faces from Tobey Maguire. Like every time mm-hmm. he's doing yeah. something, like he's fighting somebody, he's trying to stop the train or whatever, cuts in on his face and he's making the funniest fucking faces. It's awesome. That's what yeah. makes him a great Peter Parker. Yeah, he's See, a that's fucking what makes him a bad Peter Parker to me. He's not. He's not cool as Spider Man. He's lame as Spider Man. <laughs> that's my that's issue. Part of, that's part that's of the so charm. Funny. That's part of the charm. Is that like that's he is a totally fucking part weeb. Of the charm. He's a dweeb. That's why he deserves that power. Because he's not going to be like this ego fucking airhead like yeah. Tony Stark is with his superpower. He fucking uses it well. He doesn't have to have an he's ego, but he's supposed guy. to be, you know, somewhat charming. I don't want him to be charming at all. <laughs> Part of, like, the core of the character of Spider-Man as a concept is that he's not like this macho, like, I know everything that I'm doing sort of sort of guy. Part of the reason why he's my favorite superhero is because, like, he's an incredibly flawed character. And he's constantly fucking up. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing with his own life. He's, like, he doesn't even know what he wants to do with his own life. He's still figuring himself out. He's, he's, a, he's a growing adult, you know? He's, he's, he's developing himself and yet still trying to hold all of this responsibility for saving the fucking city at the same time when he can't even get his own life together. He's constantly... You know, this this is a film where he's like constantly getting cucked in every single direction. You know, like <laughs> it's like yeah, nothing e- goes right for him. E- yeah, even like uh, even like the desserts that are that are at that uh, that like fancy yeah, fancy place. Like he joke. he can't even get a fucking glass of champagne. <laughs> like he's constantly mm-hmm. constantly getting cucked. It's really that was funny. A great, <laughs> a great punchline for those that those uh. He, he was going to grab the first two hors d'oeuvres or oh, glasses yeah. of wine or whatever, yeah. and there's just empty. And then the third one he grabs, and it's empty. Like that was that was perfect. He like can't even deliver pizza on time. You know? No. Like oh, he's that was funny too. constantly just fucking up, and that's part of what makes his character so great. He's he's a fucking dweeb. He's a dork. You know, he's a loser, but he's also a superhero. You know, and like that's what makes him incredibly relatable. Is that he's not this this like infallible? That's what I lo- that's what I like about Spider Man too. And in the last few years, he's grown to be my favorite superhero, thanks to movies like you know Homecoming, Infinity War, Spider Verse. I I prefer that that incarnation of of Peter Parker. I think he's more charming and likable while still having a more true to the. You know, we still need more. We still need more time with him. To to. We'll see this year, see I guess, that. with that other one that's yeah, we'll coming. Yeah, we'll see this year. I don't know, we've seen like, a fair amount of Infinity War, he's okay, but, I mean... Like, just the fact that he's even involved in that kind of epic shit, like in Infinity War, makes him not as interesting to me. I like this iteration of where it's just him and the city, and there's no other superheroes to worry about, and he's just got to do his best, and he's got to fight corny villains. My, my my issue is with Tobey Maguire he's just so lame uh, it might it might simply be because of his voice like whenever yeah. he says anything when he's wearing the mask and he just sounds like such a dork it's like come on man you, <laughs> you're doing something so cool and heroic and then you say like, the lamest shit that's, that's exactly what I love about him yeah me so too we're just never gonna agree here yeah, that's exactly that, what I love about him that bugs him. me so much <laughs> he's a fucking dweeb exactly, exactly. I love it yeah, I don't know. Just that expert doesn't work for me. We got another Bruce Campbell cameo in this film. He plays a French guy. Yeah, he's in all. Do you prefer the Andrew Garfield to? Oh no, <laughs> no, no. He's by far the worst. I no. I just think in the last few years there there have been better Spider Men mm-hmm. in, in in movies and games and such. Mm. I I love I love the uh, the shot where. 
he's swinging through the city and the camera comes out of Doc Ock's glasses. Like that was a really cool Oh yeah. Nice yeah. cool transition that, that there. Was nice. Like so creative. You never see that shit. Like that's that's mm-hmm. my biggest problem with Spider-Man Homecoming is that it's like it's all filmed like a fucking Judd Apatow movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like shot reverse shot and then some action scenes that look like it was just like a different department responsible for the cinematography there. Like the director's <laughs> voice yeah. they each is have not in the needs. film. Yeah. You yeah, know? The first scene they made it. It's just mm-hmm. it there's no no personality to the filmmaking is that's what makes me just bored from it. Like I, I enjoyed it when I saw it. I was like, yeah, that was a good movie, but like I just don't I don't think I'll ever see it again. I'll see the second one. And hopefully the cinematography will be better, but it's just it's really boring, especially in comparison to to the Sam Raimi trilogy. You know, there's so much going on. Like that that whole train sequence, you know, was exhilarating. You really feel like you're you're flying through the air with this character. It's all shot so well. Yeah, well, Homecoming is going for a very different kind of thing too. It's it's more it's a Marvel Ferris Bueller kind of yeah that too. But it's not trying to be as stylish as, as this. It's yeah. going for a totally different thing. I mean, those characters are way better written, too, in Homecoming. That's what I mean. I think with a script like that and the presentation of a Raimi movie, it could be a, like a masterpiece, but... Oh, yeah, absolutely. The writing really holds but, it back for me. But I just Marvel can't, I can't get attached to anything. people from, like that from these things mm. now. Well, yeah, they, they make sure everyone films on the same camera, yeah, do all the same. Mm-hmm. They will have to look the same, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they want Peyton Reed to make them. <laughs> Instead of Edgar Wright mm-hmm. or James Gunn, you know we don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do you guys have oh, much God. more to say about uh, Spider-Man Two? No, not really. It's a great movie. Great movie. Uh, five out of five for me. Oh wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's that's what I had it as before. I rewatched it and I've changed it now to a three uh, star. <gasps> Yeah, man. I, I think I think it's good, not great. That's my that's my take on it. I I, I just can't. Dare you. I can't get how behind the writing characters. They're they're too bad. When we've just spent the time describing how awful James Franco and Kirsten Dunst are in the movie, and they're two of the major characters oh, yeah. in the film, she just, and Mary how Jane's bad worst. Doc Ox like. So it's, 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 too, it's too much for me because there are too many scenes dedicated to them. And sure, the action is it's incredible. It's, it's amazing. It's the, it's the best parts of the movie for sure. And the, every, everything to do with Doc Ock in terms of you know, how they present it um, with the arms and the, the effects all attached to that are, are amazing. But there's also a plot and characters and arcs that happen around it that are, are, are pretty bad for the most part. Some awful dialogue in there. Some just really bad scenes. Uh, some of the CG has aged dreadfully, just like in the original Spider Man. I don't think the CG has aged that poorly, though. No, like, I don't know. I, like, I don't feel that. In the same way. Nah, man. I, I think it's so no. obviously CG. Like, well, when they're falling down I the mean, side of the building. and Yeah, there's mm. you can tell it's CG, but it's not like the worst. It's, it's not like, oh, I no longer believe no. that this, you know, this is happening in the film's universe or anything. It's not like the first one, it's well done. Like, all the effects are well done, and they only use CG when they absolutely have to. Like, there's plenty of moments when he's climbing up buildings or whatever, and it's a set. It's a, it's a wall they built, you know, uh, facing down, and they shoot the camera in a certain way, so it looks like he's mm-hmm. climbing up. Like, like, there's plenty of practical stuff, and, like, and I that's all the stuff that I liked. the effects at all. Yeah. It, it looked very much to me like, what was it, 2004 CG. That was very obvious to me. Yeah. There's a lot about this film that I love even more than the first. There's a lot about this film that I don't love even more than the first. I think Mary Jane got so much worse. <laughs> There's like Aunt May fucking dangling from a the umbrella. That was weird. <laughs> like she mm-hmm. seemed to have super that. strength. I know. There's a lot, I mean like yeah, they, they, they there's like heightened aspects yeah, of what I love about it and also like what kind of drags it down a little, you know, I guess critically for me. I think I like this one more. I would sooner watch this one again than the first one. Uh, but I, I think I'm giving it the same rating, a 7 out of 10. It, this one this one's like a higher 7 than the other one. The other one was like close to a 6, but still a 7. This one's like higher up, I guess. But yeah, I really, really love it not enough to to give it an eight 
Well, you, if we're talking purely about my love for the film, then it's just like I could give it a 10. But, you know, from a critical standpoint of of just the overall cheesiness and uh, especially Mary Jane, she's just, just such an awful person <laughs> and just stupid things that yeah. happen and, you know, the plot, then, then I have to give it a 7. Mary Jane wasn't that annoying to me for, in this one. Yeah, the third I can't one, stand her. <laughs> in the third one, <laughs> she's a fucking piece of work. What'd you think? Along to everybody else. What'd you think of Spider-Man Three? Third one is uh, third one's not as good as the first two. I think we can all agree on that. Spider-Man Three is bad. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it, man. Spider-Man Three is bad. Movie. A good. I don't think movie. it's bad. I don't think it's bad. It ain't. It ain't good. <laughs> it's kind of. A guilty pleasure, but I don't think it's a kind like. Of. I don't. Th I don't. It's think not it's boring. Good. I'll give it that. It's entertaining. Right. That's that's the thing. It's yeah. entertaining. There's lots of well done aspects about it. I actually think the the first half is not that bad. It's not really till um like Topher Grace gets his venom suit that the movie really starts to get just awful. But mm -hmm. I mean, there's some good aspects about it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's elements that are like kind of still there from the first two, but in terms of, you know, the first two movies, there's this, I guess, internal debate of like, am I laughing with the movie or at the movie? This one, it's definitely at the movie for the majority of it. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it's definitely like, yes, mm -hmm. I'm still laughing in the same way, but that it's moments. kind of like an uncomfortable, like, yeah, this is bad, and I'm still enjoying it because I love the. You know, it's Sam Raimi trilogy, and I this is nostalgic in a way, but it's it you know it, it's it's less charmingly cartoonish and more just like poorly thought out. When you look at what doesn't work about the yeah. film, it's like okay, there's well, con it's more messy. There's conflicting stories, you know. There's too many villains. That's it's just a big mess. It's not that much different in terms of each scene on its own, in terms of the you know the presentation and the way the characters are kind of acting. But it's just stuff with so much unnecessary garbage yeah. that just Studio doesn't need to be there. Too many villains, too many characters. Studio yeah. interference. First of happens. all, they they brought Venom into it. They yeah. said you have to put Venom in this movie, and <laughs> a lot of my friends are convinced that Sam Raimi made this movie bad on purpose because he was just so pissed. Well, he didn't that want he to put to Venom in. Everything. No, he clearly didn't, and Venom feels very thrown in. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the Venom stuff is the worst stuff in the movie. Yeah. It's like the worst oh, interpretation really. of the character that I've seen. It's like, this isn't mm -hmm. Venom. A like, very what the bad fuck is interpretation this? of Gwen Stacy. Oh, very yeah. Very bad interpretations of, of a lot of the new new characters they put in. The old characters are still good. I think James Franco, uh, he sucks, but he's okay. Like... Nice. Nah, he's, he's awful. What he's been up to before. No, come on. Like he the... has an amnesia plot. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. no, I you, forgot. You can't excuse that. <laughs> that that shit. When he was cooking with Mary Jane, and they were like, "Oh, uh, we love each other now." All of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> like, that was so bad. Yeah. It's, yeah. They're, they're worse. Both of those characters are worse than Spider-Man Two. <laughs> Mary Jane worse is than really just irritating. Oh yeah. Song. She's she's getting pissed off because Spider-Man. Gave Gwen Stacy a kiss. Fuck you. You kissed everybody in Spider-Man 2. You, there's not a character you didn't fucking kiss. Okay, you're allowed to kiss everybody you want. He, he can't give one kiss. She left her husband at the altar for yeah. him. What the fuck kind of person are you? <laughs> Miss Moral Superiority over here. Fuck you, Mary Jane. She's a terrible person. And this film just, like, <laughs> exemplifies it. It's, she's just so awful. <laughs> I'm just mad at what her the whole Sandman? movie. <laughs> Sandman sucks. What do we feel about Sandman? <laughs> you mean first of all what the fuck was his origin where he was running away from the police and then he falls into this like hole that has a bunch of sand in it and then just this machine turns on yeah they were doing <laughs> like no sensors like molecular particle physics sand. testing <laughs> he's sand now see I, I thought i thought that was no more stupid than the the first two movies in terms of sandman i think sandman is the one thing sam raimi wanted in the movie I thought that was the villain yeah, he he was passionate it. about. That's and I feel fine. like his introduction, his his uh, origin with his powers thing, that's, you know, that was, it was really, really stupid, even more stupid than the previous two. But, you know, you could forgive that if the rest of it was okay. It's not just like the origin of his powers. It's Sandman, out of all of the villains in this entire trilogy, it's the it's the one where, like, 
the more you think about it, the less it makes sense in every aspect. Like just how he works physically. Like, does he have lungs? He has eyes, I guess. Like, is he doesn't he not allowed to drink water? Like, there's just so much about yeah. it where it's it his the whole physical explanation of what he is is just like okay, this is dumb. You know, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, we if you go go that deep though, then the first two movies villains like make no sense either. Not as much, not nearly as much. I don't think. It's not. This not as bad or as unconvincing. I mean, what is the Green Goblin? Is he just has some gas that makes him evil? Doctor Octopus is he's got robot arms that are evil. This is like we're gonna rearrange your molecules so that you can turn into sand. It's it's fucking too far out there. Yeah. For this kind of series, I think. Yeah, you I agree. He's like Where a famous Spider-Man villain. Like Venom, even Venom is more. I thought the whole point was that it's cartoonish and dumb. This is overboard. That's what makes them good. But it goes too far. That's the issue. I think it just goes too far in this one. Not only does it go too far, but it's th in this film. There's isn't that much holding it up outside of that. You know, like the cartoonish and yeah, dumb that's aspects the, that's of the, the real first issue. two. It's like. Yeah, it's that, and it's part of the tone, and I love it, but, like, there's substance there as well, whereas in this film, it's, like, it's really difficult to find the substance here. It's really difficult to attach to something that I love, <laughs> that that I can say, like, yeah, I really love this choice. I really love how they did this. It, it, there's not much there for this film. Well, yeah, the biggest issue I have with Sandman, aside from, you know, how stupid he is, is the... The, the the worst crime possibly that the film commits is by you know, retroactively forcing Sandman's importance into the past of the of like this this universe. Oh, I hated that. Kind of rec oh. retconning Uncle Ben's death. I hated that is, so is much. Such, a, such an awful decision. So unnecessary. To try and add something to that character. It's like disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. It's like shoving poop into the face of the the first movie. Yeah. Not yeah. respecting well, why that, that works. that personal connection subplot. Because that was one yeah. of the best parts of, of the first two. Was Uncle Ben the first one, and then the second one has more Peter dealing with the guilt of Uncle Ben's death and telling Aunt May. That this movie needed something like that, and they tried to throw Did that they? in. And I assume... Yeah, that's, that's, like... the, well, that's why Sam Raimi so adamantly wanted Sandman in it, I think, is so he could have this plot going on. And it doesn't really work. It's it's just like insisted importance, you know. Yeah. So aside from Sandman and his stupid retconning of his story, there's another there's another crime. And aside from the amnesia, there's another crime. There are there's two plenty. two love triangles in the movie. Yeah. Not only not just one love triangle, but two. Something that you know, <laughs> who likes a, a love triangle? Who who rushes to a love triangle and, and promotes that as like yeah. yeah, that's that's a great thing to have in your movie. There are two. There's the Peter, Harry, and Mary Jane one, and there's the Mary Jane, Peter, and Gwen Stacy one. Both yeah. don't really go anywhere. Both lame. Waste of time. Can't believe they're both <laughs> in the movie. I absolutely agree. Is I think this one's the longest one, too, and it just seems like there's so yeah, much fucking is. filler, especially when they're trying to fit, like, mm -hmm. three villains in there, you know, and they, they just... Yeah. Don't feel like they that, got that's developed really the cardinal properly. sin of the movie. The the first movie and the second movie just have one villain with Harry in the background. And then like so much of this movie is just trying to mimic that same structure as the first two. And it doesn't really work. Like how you have the relationship issues in the first two with Peter. Like that that was interesting and it worked somewhat. And then in in this one it doesn't. Because, like, Mary Jane and him are already together. He, she already knows that he's Spider-Man. And so what they try to do with it just isn't that interesting. The protagonist already has it all. It's like, it, it's not an interesting place to start with. Which maybe could have made Venom work with if Venom came in and kind of made him into an asshole and ruined his life or something. Yeah, be, took everything you know, from him. Some like, how, like what yeah. Dark Knight Rises did. Where, like, he loses everything. And he's yeah. left hopeless. And he has to, like, recover and, and rise back up. That's what this movie needed to do, but it doesn't because it's too busy copying the first two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> it was just Venom and just um, Harry. That, that That's more than enough to work with. You don't need anything else. Right. You don't need all this garbage around it. But they're both photographers, mm -hmm. and they want to be the best picture takers for J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, 
See, it's like a, a yeah. yin and yan sort of thing. A yin and yang. Well, it's, the, it's the superhero trope of, oh, God, we got to come up yin with a new yang. villain. <laughs> no, I no, it's pronounced sorry. yang. I just, I just wanted, yeah, I think you said it totally wrong. Yin and yang. <laughs> you were like, yin and yang. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> yang. No, I think sorry, it's pronounced yang, saying... actually. I, I looked it up, but I, really? I might be wrong. I know everybody says yin and yang, but I think it might be yang. That's why I said it that way in my old boy <laughs> review. But because I looked it up and that's yeah, what it said, maybe. so I, look, oh. I don't know. Fuck. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll find out from the comments, I'm sure. Yeah. Anyway, where did that sorry. originate? Go ahead. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying how that that's a, a, a tried and true superhero villain cliche with the evil version of the goody thing. Yeah. You know, evil Iron Man in yeah. Iron Man One, you know, and so yeah. on and so forth, but. I, I just don't think you should have Toby Maguire and Topher Grace in the same movie. <laughs> Quite honestly. <laughs> Topher Grace is really bad. It, it does it become a bit of a parody of itself, doesn't it? Yeah. At, at points. Yeah. It, it it's does. too far. It goes too far. And not in a that good way. That being said, there's a lot I like about it still. So. See, my, one of my biggest issues is I, I thought the, <laughs> the action sequences and CG were abysmal. I thought yeah. that it was worse than Spider Man Two, yeah. and even worse than One in a lo in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't even yeah. I couldn't even latch onto that like I could with the previous two. You know what I think happened? I think that because there was so much of an overabundance of computer effects in this film, the budget was just more spread out between each shot. Like in the first two films, like yeah. sure there was CG, a lot of it, you know, but like it was used sparingly. It was a healthy mixture of, of CG and practical whereas this film it's like there are no practical shots of Sandman you know like there's CG everywhere no. and they there's try a, really hard real to make it look cool it. and it's just it's so lame you compare like that train scene which has tons of practical shots most of it is practical and the, this this scene in Spider-Man 3 where uh, Harry is fighting yeah. Peter and they're like flying on the gliders and going yeah. through the city. It's all CG. The whole thing. It's, so it's just like you're, you're watching the fucking computer. Some of it is green screen. Uh, some of it. Yeah, and it looks really fake. It looks it's terrible. Just, they couldn't do it. They weren't. Yeah, I don't even think you could do it now, really. I, I like the idea of some of the action sequences, though. Like, I, I like the idea of that one where he's got the ring that he's trying to keep a hold of, but yeah. how he's keep making him, like, drop it. That, that could have been a fun action sequence with the, you know, proper visual effects and whatnot. But I, I did happen yeah, to it see... Yeah, too far. Yeah, it does go too far. But I, I did happen to read in the trivia that supposedly after test screenings of the initial cut, audiences complained that there wasn't enough action so at the last second they oh, threw really? a bunch of action and just and shoved it in yeah that's hilarious so that 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 might be why it looks so dreadful you know it does that look so bad i wouldn't be surprised because i thought that that scene is particularly ugly on the eyes like, it I is. thought that, that looks so so yeah, bad but i don't know that scene seems kind of like it's a necessary scene that's how harry gets his amnesia <laughs> yeah, but, but it is very long though isn't it they might have extended it or something yeah maybe they could have extended it um, like some of the, the CG was like I thought the CG on the Sandman while it was a little dated it looked good I thought it looked kind of cool sometimes it kind of rode the line yeah. of being almost okay sometimes it's it the kind like of thing shit. they could do like fine now probably <laughs> yeah I mean like particle physics was it was more like experimentation at that point yeah, like they they didn't. I remember really it being impressive it at the time. At that point, well, yeah, it was impressive for the time yeah, of like, hey, look cool. what we can do with computers. It but it time. never felt real. Yeah. It, it always looked like shit. Even no, back, no, no. back then, it was it was never <laughs> convincing. I don't want to say it looked like shit. It, didn't it look does like kind of look like shit. It looked like amazing bulk. No, it, I thought it looked like Spy Kids 3D at points. <laughs> the Sandman. Well, when he turns into not the Sandman, you know, like just shit. the effects. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just in general. Yeah, I agree. I didn't like the design of Venom either. They, they they didn't really, they didn't really go full out like he's super big and strong like and the, the no. giant tongue also like he has in the new Venom movie with Tom Hardy. He just mm -hmm. kind of looks like just a dude with like a big mouth. It looks really bad. Venom, Venom weirdly has the same issue that mimics and echoes Spider-Man in these Sam Raimi movies where he's just kind of lame. 
Like they get the lamest actor to play him, and they get the lamest incarnation yeah. of that character. Well, I mean, he's not like he's not as much dorky lame as he is just kind of like douchey cocky lame. You know, like he's so so and, much of an uh, asshole. His, his motivations but were he so has bad. Such little confidence in himself. He has he's more of like a bully. Be a yeah, I'll show you, Spider Man. He prays to God to <laughs> kill Peter Parker. That's the only reason why he's there too. <laughs> They needed to yeah. have him there so that he it's got like, come the symbiote. On. That, that's such a lame way. Yeah, just so the symbiote, <laughs> when it attaches to him, makes him want to kill Spider-Man. Alone at Great. night in a church, praying to God that Peter Parker will be murdered. <laughs> that's what I mean about it being too far. It's just like rushed together. Oh, crap, we got to get Venom in here. How do we make this make sense? Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Did you love how, uh, exactly. how when Venom falls from space... It just so happens to be within like fifty feet of Peter Parker. Like, out of all the places on the globe, it could have landed. Just probability wise, that's a little absurd. You know, I think that's pushing it a lot yes, farther than, than probability yeah. for any of the other films. I think that's the most well, improbable know, thing that absolutely. happened. You know, in Spider Man Two, um, the Mary Jane's husband is an astronaut. Yeah, you know, that was going to be. In Spider-Man 3, that astronaut comes back and has Venom as a stowaway. See, that could have made sense. Yeah, that was going to be the story, but that it was too expensive to do. What? It was too expensive, so they just had it be a meteor, yeah. It, it probably would have taken too long. This movie's already really long. Well, I mean... And it, it, you and it feels long. You could have communicated that in a way where it wasn't expensive. You didn't have to show anything happening in space. You could just have them coming back nah, just from a mission. just have in Central Park right next to him. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. That's what that's what the studio executives wrote in. Yeah. On the script. Their script coverage. Even if we're going to ignore the quality of the computer animation in this film, none of the action scenes seem impressively storyboarded like the first two films. No. Like when you look at the train scene in Spider Man two, it's like just imagining what the storyboard would have looked like for that. Every shot, mm -hmm. you know, just purposeful, exhilarating, creative. Yeah. And in this in this film, it's just like they outsourced it or something. I don't know what the fuck happened. You know, it, it doesn't seem yeah, the, the purposeful fight at anymore. The end with Venom and all of them, it's very dull. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a video game. Up. Like I'm not with you on that. Yeah, it's seriously, like, like a video like game. Terrible. It's still not on the level of Amazing Spider-Man Two, Amazing Spider-Man Two, and that CG and that all that. Like, they're different kinds action. of bad, but There's, they're both. Awful. Yeah, I don't know. They're the kind of similar to that. There's still a style here. Like, I don't think yeah, you gave not up. Really. You, you made it like <laughs> Sam Raimi. It didn't really feel like up. Sam Raimi it's just, anymore. It, it really, really didn't. Work. Comparing the action scenes no, from the first two films to the third were... one, there's like nothing in it that I can really remember or care about in terms of no, how it was presented. It was still, mainly because it just wasn't as fun, but also because just the story wasn't good and the characters weren't as interesting. Yeah, you just don't care by that point, do you? You just yeah. don't give a shit. I did care, like the, the just the filmmaking behind it is not purposeful at all. Yeah, in these action help, though, scenes, like that's what I loved so much about the first two, and it was just completely absent from this film. To me, it felt like it was someone who watched the Spider-Man Two train scene and was trying to copy it in a new context. You know, with Kinda, like yeah. falling sequences and yeah, it didn't yeah. really capture the heart of what made that whole sequence so exhilarating and work so well. Mm -hmm. Which is the emotional investment. Yeah, exactly. Really there's it. nothing. Uh, yeah, there's nothing that keeps you interested <laughs> for that whole sequence. But um, this film also has two versions. The the oh. Spider-Man Three Editor's Cut also exists. What? <laughs> did you? Yeah, watch it, it? that's what it's called. I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, it 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 might be better. Really? Uh, what they change? Do they cut yeah. out film? <laughs> um, no, they they cut out that awful scene from the original cut where and i can't decide whether this does actually make it better or worse you guys can help me decide mm -hmm. where harry he's already had his face exploded by the bomb and his kind of butler comes in and kind of explains uh, about what happened with uh, harry osborne and how he actually died as motivation to oh, yeah. convince him to go and help peter that scene's just not in the editor's cut so Harry just shows up. But <laughs> that's kind of funny. That's uh, weird. So 
Because because that scene is that scene is so bad with with the um, the guy yeah, coming in and, and just explaining to him. Yeah, that it's it's genuinely so insultingly bad and and sloppy and lazy. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have that, and it and it kind of cuts around the infamous dancing sequence a bit. Oh really? Um, is it still in yeah. there? Yeah. Like it is. It? Yeah. It, everything's kind of rejigged around a little bit. It, whoever put this together tried their very best, I think, but <laughs> it, it, it's too fucked at its core to really to really fix in any yeah. major way. But I think yeah. I, I'm, it's it's not like the Spider-Man two different cuts where it's so definitive which one is better for me. Like this one is, it, both cuts aren't aren't great no matter what because you know the yeah, story the is just so lame. It's shorter and it has less awful shit in it. Like that, yeah. So. Yeah, the editing is still bad in it though because you know they don't have any <laughs> any real choice of like what to cut oh, around. Boy. Yeah, it's kind of a cluster. Can we talk about emo Parker for a bit? <laughs> Yes. What were they thinking? That was bad. Like emos were not like oh, no. well received by society at that point. Like, why would you turn your <laughs> flagship superhero into Mister Emo Boy? Like he, the symbiote made him dye his hair and get some hair gel and put it over his eyes. Like, what the fuck yeah. was that? What were they thinking? Again, they wanted to do over the top. The, like, don't think about it logically. They wanted to do over the top. He becomes a bad boy. Which could have been wasn't really, really funny, a bad boy. It, it went too far. It was so weird because yeah, it was it was, was so conflicting. No, it, 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 they were trying at the same time. It was like, but it was haha, a like finger boy. guns. Like, like supposed to laugh at him. At what point does a guy dress like that, <laughs> this fucking dweeb, who now <laughs> who's now like Mr. Emo Kid, at what point does he start getting all the ladies in like any kind of society? <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'm so confident and suave now. <laughs> that, it, that's like, would be it. like, ew, gross. Get away that, from that me. Funny. Like, what the fuck is that? I think aside from that, it it would kind of work because it, it's like the antithesis of the raindrops keep falling on my head sequence from the second one. It's like the opposite. Yeah, it it's, it's supposed to be exaggerating. Far. Yeah, it, it it doesn't make sense within within the confines because it it would kind of work if because they already established that venom kind of accentuates, uh, you know, feelings that you're already having. So. It would it would make sense for this lamo to think he's kind of being cool by having this alien you know accentuate how he, how he's feeling, but w it actually works for him. Yeah. So they confirm that, that's it. what makes it really confusing. Yeah, exactly. If if everybody was like, "Ew, gross, get away from me," then that would have worked so much better. But instead, it's like, "Oh, like everybody." There were some people. Well, like maybe just in the dance scene, there was some weird looks or whatever. But like. He wound up. Yeah. He wound up like getting into like clubs and getting girls and shit. And like, it was so like the the film was like reinforcing like, yeah, he's a bad boy now. Like, what? This isn't cool. It it, it felt like unintentionally lame. And I get that they were trying to make it kind of lame also. But like the fact that they were reinforcing this idea that like, oh, he's cool now, that really did not help it. Yeah, it should be accentuating that he's lame. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, YouTube video Spider-Man 3 dance scene with realistic audio? <laughs> no. You should check that out later. Nope. It's really funny. Somebody took out the the music in the dance scene and just added like a bunch of foley. So like his clothes like ruffling and just him going like, ah, ah. and like you can hear the <laughs> footsteps. It's really funny. Yeah. Just like traffic in the background. <laughs> That's what I was picturing when he was dancing to yeah. himself. It's like there's no music yeah. in Cause it doesn't the make real any world sense. here. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Th this is a film where like even the score felt worse. Even the music felt like much less purposeful. Like what the fuck well, was yeah, up Danny with didn't the, do it, did he? Uh, he didn't do it? No. Oh, I didn't even else. know that. Someone called like Christoph Beck or something. Why the fuck did they do that? Maybe he wasn't interested. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It seems like a lot of people weren't interested in making this one. It's just overall morale just seemed lower for this. That jazzy bullshit when when him and Harry are fighting. Like what was that? <laughs> like what what the fuck kind of tone were you trying to go for there? It was so weird. This is a confused movie in every sense. Yeah. I love how uh the symbiote basically just is on his suit, but not him, kind of. <laughs> like, that was weird. 
Yeah, they kind of picked and choose the way that worked. Yeah, it was a little inconsistent. Yeah. Apparently, the uh, the symbiote is classically trained in jazz piano. <laughs> Peter all of a sudden is a master piano player. It's, yeah, they do things just for the sake of a gag. Yeah. And it's like, that's not funny. Yeah. You're, you're just doing this to try and get a cheap laugh. You're yeah. better than this normally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what else is even left in this fucking film? What else is left? That's like kind of the whole movie. Yeah. What is this film even about? There's not that much to <laughs> to pull from this film that, other than like that was my real it's a issue messy with it. Studio interference, kind of cash grab. Yeah. But yeah. I think some people are trying. I think Tommy McGuire is still good. Sam Raimi came through sometimes. But yeah, it's a very messy movie. Eddie Brock was really annoying the whole time. Like Topher Grace, I hated him. I didn't like Sandman. Yeah. I didn't like James Franco. Like I hated MJ. Like n there was nobody to attach onto in this film. Like not even Spider-Man. Simmons was so funny. Well, of course he's always funny, but he's so not funny. even he's not like a character to attach onto. It's like who am I supposed to yeah, relate to in this story? To story? Exactly. Yeah. I hated Spider-Man too. Like they they took every character and made them more annoying, and then threw in other characters <laughs> that were annoying. And so you've just got an entire film mm -hmm. filled with obnoxious, unlikable characters that you don't want to see. <laughs> yeah, that's the real issue. Because you could forgive like some bad CG and stuff like that if at the very heart of it there was like a, a good story and real drama with characters that you cared about. But you mm -hmm. don't care about any of them because, like you say, they are yeah. they're so unlikable. I don't want to see the these guys do anything. It was very weak. Just the way they chose to end this whole series. It was limp, it was wasn't like, it? Yeah, very lit. It was kind of like the La La Land ending, <laughs> where they like go to the club and they they like lock Spoilers. eyes with each other. Yeah, spoilers for La La Land. Um, but yeah, it was really underwhelming. <sighs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, what's it's the a, rating? It's, a, it's fucking yeah, exactly. exhausting, bad movie, and it killed the franchise, which is. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Maybe a good thing. They could have made Spider-Man 4, I guess, if they wanted. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Let, let the good thing die. Yeah. And just move on. A third movie being good would have been nice, too, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I would have preferred that. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, of course. We didn't need Venom. But when does that happen? Like, no. I love I Venom. Venom. I like the character Venom. I would like to see Venom in a Spider-Man movie that's good, but... It's never gonna happen, so whatever. <laughs> they, they still gotta, yeah. They they haven't done it yet. I'm still waiting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's gonna just, be. A it's challenge. too silly. It's too messy. Has way too many villains. And but overall, I still enjoyed parts of it, like a two out of five. Um, we're kind of in agreement on this one. I think it's just a mess, but not the not the worst thing in the world. It's kind of interesting, like. You can't take your eyes off it in the same way you can't take your way eyes off like a, a dying animal or something. <laughs> just just to see what's gonna yeah. happen next. It's still entertaining. Yeah, it's entertaining, but you know, it and it it just becomes the the very thing, you know, everyone thought the originals would be, you know, on paper yeah. before they'd proved themselves. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, you just became the very thing. <laughs> oh, get out of here, man. Two out of five. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not good. It's not good. I, I was initially, uh, thinking, uh, like a five right after I watched it, but like just thinking about it today, I'm giving it a four out of ten. You think it's worse than Amazing Spider Man? Come on. What, well, I mean, I think, what, what did I say about the Amazing Spider Man? I think I said I give it a, like a four or a five. I think I said five. Yeah, but... five. Yeah, five. I don't know. He's it's like five. this one is more. Um, <laughs> That's me that kept comparing ratings. This, <laughs> this one, this one is more um, unintentionally incompetent in what it tries to do. Like I don't, I don't think that the Amazing Spider-Man, the first one, tried very hard at all. I don't think it was trying to be anything really. It was just like kind of a cash grab. And in that sense, it was more kind of like honest with itself, I guess. Whereas this film, 
this film yeah. it like this is this is the conclusion of this trilogy that so much love initially went into and to to see it all crash and burn you know and like there's i'm i'm more annoyed by this film like the the amazing spider-man one i'm bored by it this one i'm i'm more annoyed by it like yeah i can't i can't yeah, fucking I stand this movie the way you are i can't fucking stand venom as a character and i i i hate like after watching it recently i realized how much i hate topher grace's voice as venom i realized just watching <laughs> yeah, yeah watching like venom and hearing like I'll get you, Spider-Man. Like, fuck off. That's not Venom. What the hell is that? Mm -hmm. What the fuck are yeah. you doing? <laughs> like, it was just, was it felt like much. not just a betrayal of, of like the comic books and source material, but a betrayal of, of the trilogy. I really, uh, it's not great. I think I'm giving it a four out of 10. Yeah. Hmm. I don't, I don't see this as <laughs> a crash and burn. Like, I don't think it's that awful. I just think that this is more like it petered out. Petered? As a series. Yeah, Peter, <laughs> Peter Parker out. Damn. Pizza time. Uh, pizza time. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my my tweet. I I took a little snippet <laughs> of the movie watching party, and we ordered pizza. And when he said pizza time, we all ate our pizza. Because <laughs> <laughs> somebody, I, I found out, like yeah, I just did a was... Google search. When does Peter Parker say pizza time in Spider Man Two? And there was actually a Reddit post that made it to the front page. <laughs> Uh, on New Year's uh, this past year <laughs> saying, hey, FYI, if you start playing uh, Spider-Man 2 at at like 11.52.30 p.m., he'll say pizza time at midnight. What a great way to bring in the new year. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> uploaded it. But, yeah. All right. So that was a great lengthy discussion on the Spider-Man films. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad we did this. Okay, we some did questions, it. And let's get the fuck yeah, out of we'll here. do like two or three questions. <laughs> I gotta get back to a long episode. <laughs> okay, I'll do some ones that aren't juicy as. Sorry. F. Um, <laughs> yeah, they got plenty of content. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to leave your own questions for us to answer in this part of the episode, head over to the Sardonicast Reddit, where Ralph normally leaves a funny little thread for you to leave whatever question you want. So we'll start this one with. Junkyard Jesus 1981 with a topic that's on people's minds I think at the moment because of the Oscars in your opinion what is the worst best picture winner uh, I mean the the two answers are kind of obvious aren't they what like Crash well, and... one of them is Crash for me I've never even seen Crash but that's my answer <laughs> yeah I enjoyed I it when see I was it, younger curiosity. but Thinking back on it, it's just it's not aging well in my memory. And there's a lot of stupid things that happened and it was really forced and preachy. So there's one, I guess, but I don't know. Like I'll have to look at the best picture winners on Wikipedia, see if there's another one that stands don't out. Don't you you don't like Spotlight, do you? I thought it was just a very bland, boring, unspecial movie, but it's not something that I like thought was terrible. It was just not something that I would have liked to have seen win Best Picture when there were so many other nominees that yeah. were much better. Those are the only two that really jump out to me because I went through like yeah. a list of a bunch of them. Oh, really? That's that's usually it. Yeah. I don't really think Spotlight is bad, but I don't think it deserved to win. It's just forgettable. Like nobody fucking talks about it at this point. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. It was also yeah. really that's surprising that it more. won. Like, that didn't make any sense. Yeah, like, The Artist and King's Speech. Like, all those movies are good, but I think there's always movies that are better. Like, you know. The only one I would say is bad is Crash. Like, that's the only one I would okay. say. Well, it's, I'm just scrolling through. We're in the 2000s. We're in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, nothing really nothing, jumped out at me aside from those two. Nothing offensive. We could beat that this year, given the nominees. We could yeah, definitely I was thinking beat that. that. Yeah, if Black Panther wins. That'd I'll be, be so that would, happy if that Black would be Panther wins. Win. Yeah, I, I want it to win. Fuck it. Woo! I do. <laughs> I legitimately want it to win. I think it would be the funniest yeah, thing. We'll see. It would be hilarious. Anyway. Tunisian asks, are there any filmmakers who you think have made both a 10 out of 10 and a 1 out of 10? 
And if so, who are they? M Knight. <laughs> and that's a good one. What would you say is a ten out of ten? I don't know. The Sixth Sense. It's pretty great. I mean, it has Sixth its flaws. Sense is ten out of ten. It has its flaws, but like <laughs> overall, I mean, like it might just it might just me be be me trying to like fulfill the prophecy of <laughs> of his downward spiral by artificially inflating yeah. how great yeah, his first um, film was. Don't take the question really the literally film. in terms of like has to be a 10 out of 10. Yeah, but the question I mean, is more interesting of like a really good movie and then a really bad yeah, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean realistically, The Sixth Sense, I don't know, it's an 8 or higher for sure. Like I actually think that it's a great film. I really love it. And Glass was like the worst fucking thing. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Just Glass or you mean most I mean, of that you career. could you could give just the worst thing. Realistically, you could give a 1 out of 10 to several of M Night's films and it wouldn't be out of the question. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, my my filmmakers are well. Mine's David Lynch. He made mm. Dune, which is awful. It's really bad. Mm -hmm. But he also really? made, of course, The Racer Head and uh, Blue Velvet, like all kinds of great movies. And then also um, Tarantino. He made Pulp Fiction and uh, lots of great stuff. But what's his he one also star? Made, what's that race movie? Death. Oh, Death Proof? Race. Death Proof, sorry. Death Proof. <laughs> <Not> death <race. laughs> no, death proof. <laughs> yeah, Death Proof. Death Proof, which is really bad. So. I fucking love Death Proof. Yeah, we're going to have to do a Death Proof We totally have to episode. Yeah, let's talk about shit. Death Proof, because Death Proof is a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of with you. <laughs> but, but we'll get into it. Yeah. I guess debatably some people would say George Lucas in this answer. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a great yeah. answer. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah. Mine would be uh, Ridley Scott. Um, I love Alien, oh, yeah. but I hate Alien Covenant. <laughs> mm. Or um, Steven Spielberg. You can make yeah. Schindler's List and then Ready Player One. Ready Player okay. One. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola went from The Godfather to like now he's making Twixt. It's a movie Twixt, which looks terrible. I've never <laughs> seen it, but it's like just shot on a digital camera. It looks fucking awful. Val Kilmer's like 80 years old in it. Oh, you should totally Sounds watch awesome. that. Other other good answers for this, even though I would not probably not give them a 10 on their films, would be uh, Spike Lee would be a good one. Um, mm -hmm. Spike Lee's a great answer. Jason Reitman would be a good one for this. He's directed some um, great mo movies and some actually, terrible, terrible movies. I was gonna say the guy who made uh, Mute. Oh yeah. Mute. Oh yeah. What's that guy? David Thomas Bowie's Jones. son. Yeah. 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 yeah he kind of. He made Moon made and Source Code are very good, and then Mute is awful. But. Yeah, Mute sucks. I couldn't finish it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was literally just scrolling through my one out of ten ratings on uh, IMDb, <laughs> seeing who came up. All right. Yeah, That's right. it for me. Raging Bull 1999 asks, which movie endings were so bad that they ruined the whole film? Did we answer something like this before? Yeah, we probably have, but whatever. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Remember me. Have you guys seen that movie? I know what happens at the end, but I is haven't the, seen is it. Is that the 9-11 one? <laughs> uh, well, for those of you who don't know, um, Robert Pattinson, it's like a drama having to do with his dad or whatever. It's boring as hell. But then the movie needed some emotional butt punch at the end. So the twist of the movie is the whole, whole thing took place uh, right before 9-11. And Robert Pattinson's in the World Trade Center on 9-11 and he's going to die. And that's the movie. <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> You're like, that's what the fuck? <laughs> it's kind of funny, <laughs> but it's so fucked up and manipulative. I can't honestly yeah, believe he did that. that it's hilarious. Nasty. It's disgusting. Source code. I hated the ending of that film. I Am Legend mm -hmm. hated the ending of that film. Yeah, bad ending. All Is Lost, terrible ending for that film. Man of Steel, the whole movie was bad, but <laughs> the ending Wait, is... My, the, my, my answer would be a DC game. movie. Wonder Woman. I thought it, it was fine up until the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yes! Oh, yeah. Yes, that's, that's a good example, yeah. There's a film that, like fucking nobody has seen and it's really difficult to find on blu-ray um with english subtitles at least <laughs> called the fox and the child and 
it's like this it's it's from the director i think he directed march of the penguins or something let me just check real quick yeah march of the penguins and um he's got like he's got a really great style he's got this basically he um in this film he mixes like nature documentary and fiction at the same time and there are all these like crazy like action sequences of like a wild cat chasing a fox or whatever but it's like connected to the story and you're getting all these weird crazy shots and it's super impressive and like the 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 plot of the film is like this little girl is like friends with the, this fox outside or whatever and um the end of the film is like one of the most fucked up <laughs> kind of weird fucking things i'm gonna spoil it so it's spoiler warning everybody but like she, the, the little girl is like i want to keep the fox and she like you know she lures it into her home and then like th this entire film that was like that is on imdb it says rated g and it like you would assume this entire film was for <laughs> kids like this girl befriending a fox right yeah the fox fucking freaks out in her room and like smashes itself against her walls and runs all over and like and and screams out in pain and jumps through the fucking window and dies <laughs> and it's like <laughs> it's the weirdest thing it's Jesus. like holy shit what is this doing in this movie like i thought this was for kids like there's no way that would fucking fly well and that's part of the reason why no one's seen it i guess is because it, it's one of those things where it's like it's a, how the fuck are you gonna though. sell that yeah it sounds awesome it's so weird <laughs> oh yeah it's the funniest fucking thing because it's out of nowhere but like it's also just like depressing <laughs> and just like terrible <laughs> so that was one <laughs> Like that's that's a great film to show to people who like will have no idea that it's coming and just get their reaction. <laughs> you know, like, oh, we're watching a nice little movie. It's like well shot, some cool sequences, this little girl befriending a fox, and then that scene fucking comes up. Like, what the fuck? It's so <laughs> weird. It's called The Fox and the Child. Check it out. <laughs> Harry the Berry. That's quite funny. It says, uh, what are some of the best uses of music or alternatively silence in film? Hmm. What, what pops into your mind? Um, for silence, it's Raging Bull during the fight. It's a great use of silence. Um, but music, I gotta think about. You guys go. <laughs> well, it depends what you mean by uses of music because if, like, we're talking about, like, the purpose behind composition, like Inception has very purposeful composition. I think we explained this at some point before, like the the theme whenever they're going into the dream world, like the bomb bomb is actually mm -hmm. a slowed down version of the, uh, you know, in ways very reminiscent to being a slowed down version of the song that they use to synchronize each other's sleeps or whatever, I or their dreams yeah. or yeah. whatever. I found that to be very cool and purposeful. And also the music is great regardless. You know, there's lot there's lots of examples of of like well thought out and purposeful music, like uh, Johnny Greenwood's Phantom Thread. You know, the the notes sound like they're being played on one of those little uh, instruments where where you you take like a a ball attached to a string and just let it fall. You know, it's like oh, that's you know thematic with threads. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And also very well yeah, written, Giant regardless. Yeah, a great example. Yeah, it's it's like it's a it's really a thing. The collaboration between a composer and a director is very important. Mm -hmm. Like I was, uh, like I listened to the new score for Bird Box, which is also by Trent Reznor. Yeah, yeah. Alex Ross, and it was it was definitely not bad at all, but very standard and not. Yeah, very it was just exciting. nothing. Yeah, you wouldn't know yeah. it's them. So you compare that to like. The work they do with David Fincher, it's way better because mm -hmm. I think those guys send way more notes back and forth. I think their work relationship is way better, and that that kind of stuff makes all the difference in you know moments like that where the music really makes the scene. Like the Johnny Greenwood, that scene in um, There Will Be Blood when the the fire happens and there's like that fucking like this loud, I think it's like a string being plucked. Yeah, that's probably my answer. Yeah, there's there's plenty of examples of like silence being appropriately used to in, in in order to make a scene more impactful. 
Like there's way too many to for one to even stick out. Like I could just pick out like the Dark Knight. You know, there's no music during yeah. that scene, that chase scene with the vehicles, and it's like, whoa, this is so much more intense. And you know, like you you hear every single one of the uh, sound design elements to it rather than the actual soundtrack. Like all the yeah. explosions and the Chris Nolan started going tires back. screeching and all yeah. that. Like it's so well done. Interstellar has great use of silence and music as well. Oh yeah. He's, he's very good with that stuff. I guess the only other example I want to uh, bring up is uh, the original Old Boy. I thought that like all of the music was very yeah. purposeful, very well done. I love how near the end of the film, the, the villain is like humming the theme that we've been hearing the entire time. And it's like, it's not even mm -hmm. attempting mm -hmm. to be like yeah. a fourth wall break. It's it's like the the theme that we heard throughout the entire film is is like a uh, rendition, a cinematic rendition of the theme from the Evergreen Old Boys Academy, which actually plays a purpose into the film. You know, it's like, oh, wow, you took something that's like in the film's universe, you expanded upon it and made it more emotional. And, you know, it, it's just it's so purposeful. And I love the uh, yeah. classical music during the tooth torture scene, like everything about the music in the original old boy is super effective mm -hmm. super purposeful very well done and then in the remake they just decided fuck it we're gonna get stock music <laughs> bullshit so right that was great mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, i want to mention kubrick too well, like barry linden of course. we talked about it the use of music in that but yeah barry linden and yeah. yorgos who's in many ways copying like or not copying a paying homage to kubrick with his use of music it's very effective as well Mm -hmm. So, props to them. Um, you guys will laugh at me, but <laughs> Madagascar. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. I was gonna say DreamWorks <laughs> as a as a company have weirdly mm -hmm. good um soundtracks a lot of the time, especially anything John Powell has worked on. I love John Dragon, Powell. Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Excellent, Actually, excellent music. Yeah. Um, and even mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer did the music for Madagascar one, two, and three. What? And, uh, yeah, crazy. Yeah, man. Oh, Hans. So yeah, that's that's my that's my choice. <laughs> yeah, I like the I like the music he made for Happy Feet. It's great. Not Hans, John Powell. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen for Happy Feet Happy for Feet. so long. <laughs> no, it was good. Yeah, I can't really even remember, I can't really remember Happy Feet. Very I liked long. it. I enjoyed that movie. Yeah, I remember it. I liked it. Directed by. Uh, George Miller. <laughs> George, <laughs> yeah. George Miller's Happy Feet. Bizarre. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Mad Max. All anyway, right. Is that it? Yeah. If you uh, did you say the thing about how if they want to leave the more questions, go to the Reddit? I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. It's uh cool. it's my turn to recommend Shut the a movie. fuck up. <laughs> it Woo! won't be your turn for a while. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you might wish it was I your turn one. to recommend Don't a movie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm ha I have an internal dilemma. Just um, do it. <laughs> you reckon? Just fucking do it. Then there's a second internal dilemma. Okay. There is a great debate going on whether the second or third one of the movie I'm going to recommend. Uh, I wonder which is movie. Superior. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. I wonder which movie you're talking about. Nah, you're gonna go into it wanting to hate it, so I'm just gonna choose something else. Oh, Happy Feet. Nah, 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 nah. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm gonna choose. Okay, this is so tough. Madagascar two. Okay. <laughs> All right. Nice. Madagascar. No, Thanks. seriously. Seriously. Okay. Go in with an open mind. That's all I ask. I will. That's okay. all I ask. Okay. okay. Right. I'm, I'm, I got my mind is open. My mind is open. Yeah, and also smoke loads of weed before watching it. Eh. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Just because I'm a fucking long-haired hippie living in Vancouver doesn't mean I smoke a lot of weed, bruh. <laughs> Alice, I think you're gonna I'll be surprised. One viewing sober, and then one viewing. High yes, it's really three. short. It's really short, so it's like not. It's not okay. much. You know, it's not much of a commitment. Okay. But what's the runtime on that? One hour and 29 minutes, but it's probably like an hour and 20. Um, oh, cool. Okay, is there anything that I need to... Uh, <laughs> I I watched the first movie a long time ago. Is there anything... Any... The first one is, is renowned as being the, the fucking worst one, right? Okay. But two, right. And three, two and three are 
you know, incredible. Should we watch both two and three? <laughs> I mean, I you can, I would love you, to, but okay. I, I don't know if you guys are, are, I'll, are willing to do I'm such, willing such to. a thing. I'm willing to do that. I'll, I'll, fine, I'll check I'm out sure the, the conversations won't be <laughs> as like lengthy as and extensive as the Spider-Man films, and we just did we just <laughs> did five of them anyway. We just no did five way. of them. So, but, do you know who wrote the the screenplay for Madagascar three though? Uh, oh. I'm looking at it right now. Personal. Noah Baumbach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. That's actually okay. hilarious. Okay. Okay. Oh god. Oh god. Well, you did it. Thank you. All right. At least, at the very least, at least it's out of the way. You know, I can't do it after it's been done. Right. And if you're doing them both in the same episode, I can never do another one again until the fourth one comes out, which is being made. So. <laughs> oh, there's a fourth one. <laughs> is there? Is it it's in production, made? supposedly? Yeah. Oh Christ. Jesus. Yeah. Of course. Why would there be? <sighs> <sighs> okay. Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> So uh, yeah, you guys, you guys are gonna love it. Yep. No, if, trust me. Uh, trust me on this one. If any of y'all listening at home want to join in on the discussion, if you don't want to be spoiled for Madagascar two and three, <laughs> uh, watch them. <laughs> watch them before the next uh, episode. Uh, we will be having a spoiler discussion. It was worth it just for that. <laughs> it's. Uh, uh, thank thank you for. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, for Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you want to support the show, if you don't show, watch two and three, you're done for me. If you, I'll watch them. I'll watch them. Don't worry. If you want to support the show, head over to uh, sardonicast.com. Uh, sign up for premium. Two dollars a month will get you these episodes early. Also, patreon.com/slash sardonicast. And also, we have merch. Mm-hmm. Links in the description. Thank you so much. That's right. Be sure to tune in next week and listen to us <laughs> talk about Madagascar 2 and 3. Is this... We love you. Are these the ones that have that fucking I like to move it thing in it? Yes. I like to oh move, move it. I like to move it. Move it. Yeah, I like to... It's, it's Ralph, going stop. to be the best episode. Stop it, Ralph. <laughs> I'm, no, let's uh... see the whole thing. Wait, I'm going to pull it Oh, no. <laughs> Do you know who did the soundtrack also with Hans Zimmer on Madagascar 2, though? Who? <laughs> Who? Will I am? <laughs> oh. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Stop it. I like the moment Stop moment. it. We're gonna get copyright claimed. Stop <laughs> it. Oh, shit. Stop. Wait, we're gonna, gonna we're gonna, it we're gonna get demonetized. <laughs> now. Stop it. Stop oh it. Stop. Stop. Turn it off so I can stop talking. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. We won't get claims for that. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we won't get claims for that. Bye.